Podcast City Network. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of the Everett Lee Show. But before we get on with the guest onto the program today, there's a couple things I do want to mention that you can help out with supporting the Everett Lee Show. If you're looking to start a podcast and already have a podcast and you're looking for an affordable podcasting hosting site, Podbeam is your number one choice. Podbeam offers statistics with in-depth analytics to manage your podcast needs. Use the promo code podbeam.com slash PB sign up and get a free month off. That's podbeam.com slash PB sign up to get a free month off and see why 1,500 episodes have been shared all over the world in the past 11 years with over 3,000 subscribers that have chose Podbeam as their number one hosting site. And if you're looking to get into advertising, Podbeam advertising, you get $100 off advertising when you sign up as a sponsorship over on podbeam.com slash pro slash PB sign up. That's podbeam.com slash pro slash PB sign up. You're listening to the Everett Lee Show. Today we listen in on a discussion from a throwback episode of the Everett Lee Show. You may have heard this discussion before on a previous episode, or you may have not. Enjoy. Mr. Wrestle Popcast and host of Future Great Wrestling's Beyond the Bell, Robin Nilsson. What's up, man? Pretty good. How are you doing on this uh, Saturday evening? I'm enjoying it, man. I mean, I got my drink on and I'm ready to roll, man. I'm ready to, you know, go into the night because uh, I got the dark night on. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of conflicting right here. I got a DC shirt on and I got a Marvel uh, hat on with the Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know something? There's nothing wrong being fans of both comic franchises. It's all good. Mm-hmm. It is good. It is good. And just being a fan of the comics and just that in general right there is just amazing because I I love I I love I love the uh I love comics. I love the TV shows and I love over the years just comics in general because they're so entertaining. They take you away from everything, man. You jump into an adventure right at your fingertips and you don't even have to leave the house. You know how that is, right? Oh, yeah, it's an adventure. It takes you away from your everyday life, you know, your bills, your job, everything. You just get sucked into a great story, like a great story by Jeff Johns or Tom King or Scott Snyder from D.C., great, talented writers. Yes, those are, those are great, man. Those are, those are like, the best. I, enjoyed, I enjoy Alex Ross. I love his style of comic, how he does the with the comics, just the characters, how he does that style. I know you're familiar with Alex Ross there. Yeah, he does some beautiful artwork. I mean, um, he's he, it's excellent, especially if you read his uh, Kingdom Come series, you know, which is graphic novels, which is pretty good. The art is just phenomenal, man. He's one of my uh, top favorite artists out there, right behind, you know, Jim Lee, of course. I love Jim Lee as well. Yeah, yeah, I've, great artist right there that you mentioned and that I mentioned, and you you can't go wrong with that. You definitely can't go wrong with that. But I'm ha- I'm happy you're here tonight, man. It, it's been a long time since since Robin Nelson has graced his presence here on the Everett Lee Show, man. And one one thing I want to ask, uh, what what the heck's been going on here lately, man? Uh, how how you been? How how you holding up? I'm doing pretty good over here in Ohio. Um, they got the restrict where you have to stay at home, but you can go out and walk and enjoy the day and, you know, do your basic stuff, you know, grocery store, doctors, or, or you know, what's what you have to do to survive. And I have an essential job I have to go to Monday through Friday, too. And, you know, it's it's just hard, you know, because there's really not, nothing to do, man. You have to think of stuff to do, especially professional wrestling and independent shows. A lot of these pro wrestlers out here um, can't survive. That's where they make their bread and butter from. Yeah. You know, you um, and people who are out who are listening to right now, you should um, reach out to your independent wrestlers and buy their merchandise, their T-shirts, their stickers, and everything, so they can make a living to survive until 
um, we beat this horrible coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, Def- definitely support support indie wrestlers, support your local wrestlers, and support your local businesses too. I put a tweet, uh, I put a message out there on Facebook today that um, our good sponsors, the Podcast C Network, City Limits Tap Room, they right now they're they're shut down. They're basically shut down, Robin, and, and they can't. Jim Jim Knight, who owns City Limits, he he can have people to come in and enjoy themselves, have a good time at his at his venue, and no live music, no nothing. And he's doing carry out, and um, yeah, he's also uh, you can have a little bit of a little bit of a bubbly there, you know, with a food order and stuff. He's doing delivery. He, he's trying to make men's eat, meat. It's just it's ridiculous what everyone's going through right now. It's just it kills me, you know. Oh, I it think does. it's horrible. All the deaths, and uh, but you also got to think of positive too. There's a lot of people that have fought this virus and are cured of it too. Um, you hardly hear that many of those stories out there, you know, as well. You just always hear the negative, but there's some positive out there too because I know we can uh, find a cure and destroy this virus. I mean, we got to think positive, you know, and um, people need to quit. Uh, reading, you know, articles about negative stuff about the coronavirus, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you should be looking at positive, you know, articles about people helping each other to fight this. Mm-hmm. And always, you know, like I said, stay home. Don't get into a, a hundred people. Always wash your hands regardless. Wash your hands like crazy. Yeah. Um, um, I always done that before this virus came out anyway. That's the way I was raised. But just yeah. wash your hands. You know, uh, do your six feet, you know, distance. I mean, you can you can do your virtual hugs or virtual waves, whatever. But yeah, you know, we we all have to stick together and fight this, and um, hope everything gets back to normal. I mean, I know everybody's probably fed up being you know stuck in their house like like they're serving the prison term, but you shouldn't think it like that. You should be positive. Uh, think of stuff to do. You know that you can do. Um, do videos of what your hobbies and likes are. Do something to entertain people on your social media to encourage them with all that positive so they can do great stuff as well. Entertain each other for Pete's sakes. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot to do. And one one way I look at this is how you know how basically <laughs> With with parents trying to get their kids out nowadays, get out of the house, go do something. Now it's like, yep. no, stay in, please stay in because it's bad out there. It's bad out there. I look back at like Billy Madison. He's like, <laughs> it's, we're, we're Billy Madison. He's like, oh, you yeah. don't want to go to the fourth grade. Stay here as long as you can. It's parents is like, stay in the house, stay in there as long as you can. You could stay here. Hey, you want to play PlayStation? There you go. Xbox. There you go. Hey, you want to watch this and watch that? But um, one one thing, Robin, that America and the world actually probably here mostly in America, they're they're gonna have to they're gonna be uh, the hospitals are gonna have to prepare for another pandemic at the end of the year. And you know what that is, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I hope it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope I hope it doesn't because that's gonna be so messed up. I mean, boy, what a twenty twenty, right? <laughs> I know. the The pandemic I'm talking about is that uh, we're gonna have another baby boom. We're gonna have Corona babies at the end of the year, and uh, there's gonna be another pandemic going along with that. Uh, people who's gone blind from watching too much Pornhub during this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Or they don't have enough. They don't have enough juice in their system anymore to watch Pornhub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever watch? You ever watch Family Guy? You ever seen? You ever seen that episode where Quagmire found out about the internet and they didn't see him for like two days? And then when they seen him, he's sitting there <laughs> yeah. and he's all like this, and he's like, "Yeah," and he raises his arm up to go. He's like, "I want to go check. Uh, need to go check the mail." <laughs> his arms like all <laughs> huge and stuff. <laughs> he's all like just. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a so that's going to be like one of another pandemics at the end of 2020. You got uh, baby boom and people that's gone blind because of everything that's happened this year. But like you said, the recovery thing, no one's no one's really talking much about it because I had to turn off. I had to turn off. I had to turn off the news. 
I have to turn off news. When my wife has the news on, I have to turn it. I have to leave the room because it's gotten to the point where you hear about cases, cases, death, cases, cases, death. Why? How come they're not talking about talking about, hey, the recovery rates going really good. Hey, the recovery, these people who had it have beaten it and now they're leaving the hospital. They're going back to their lives or what's left of their lives now. And I feel for those who's lost families to this thing. But yeah, you make up a good point. What? Why is not? Why is not the news or anything reporting about? On a positive side, we got so many cases that recovered, and now they're going home. I guess they just want to keep us in fear and keep us panicked, you know. And and it shouldn't be like that. Um, you know, you should be you know real cautious and be a little bit scared about this too. But but you also have to think of the positive side. You know mm-hmm. they're gonna find a way to stop this. There's people getting cured. There's people being positive. You know so everybody quit scaring one and another. You know just be positive about the whole thing. You know it's like we're gonna survive this. You know yes. you know um, be thankful you're you're alive. I mean I feel bad for the families to have like you said lost a lot of loved ones. That's very yeah, sad. It is. But it's you bad. know. You just gotta, it's gotta be positive about everything. You can't, you know, be scared, you know, of what's going on. I mean, like I said, it's the virus. It's serious, you know. I mean, you know, stay home, do what you need to do to protect yourself as well, but don't get it like way over your head, which is just gonna constantly bother you either, because mm-hmm. that's not good. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely, it definitely. You pull up a, you pull up a really good point there, and it's true. It's true. I got some comments going off in the chat here, and one of those comments is a okay. mutual friend of ours, okay. David C. Russell. Death oh, Pass hey, Russell. David. Yeah, he says hello, Everett Lee, and you're and you're great, the one and only Robin Nelson. Yeah, have to do the Larry Sabisco <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. and he says, Robin. Did you take a walk with our brother? Brother loves you. <laughs> Whatever that means. Oh, there, there. he goes. Being <laughs> obsessed with brother love. Yeah. Poor and Pritchard. He, Poor Mr. Pritchard. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, and he says, I miss you, Robin. So let's give some love hey, right there. David C. Russell, I miss you too. And I give you a virtual hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I would too, man. We all love David, man. We love what he does with Deathmatch Russell Podcast. Shout out to him. But yeah, we we definitely we definitely do love love what he does. And speaking speaking of a uh, podcast, Russell Popcast, man. You uh the last time I heard an interview from Russell Popcast last year was at the end of uh was around December of last year. You had Adam Rose on, which was a great a great interview there. And the video footage that you shot with this match Man, you got a lot, a lot of like a views and comments on that when you threw it up on YouTube. Tell me about that right there. The did you you didn't expect anything like that, did you? No, I didn't. Um, it, um, he was um, wrestling for Battle of the Border Pro Wrestling, which is outside of Cincinnati and Harrison, which was run by Denim Blevins. Um, he had um, well, he was retired from wrestling for a bit but he still was under contract with Denim, so he would um, decided to do two more shows before he retired. So that match he did with the baddest man alive, Aaron Williams, one of the greatest top-notch independent wrestlers out there. I'm surprised AEW or WWE's never picked up on this guy. The guy's phenomenal. Um, that was his final match ever um, getting into the ring. So, uh, you know, um, I decided to film that. And then when I posted it on my uh, YouTube page, Russell Popcast, it got like over 700 views. Damn. That's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. But but you didn't expect it to blow up like that, did you? Um, no, um, not at all. Because um, I'm their uh, camera guy for Battle on the Border Pro Wrestling. I filmed their matches. Plus, I'm also part of the board there, too, you know, uh-huh. with the other board members. We sit and decide what's going to happen at the next shows and, right. you know, what where the storyline's going and you know which wrestlers are going to be coming it, it's just great uh Bound the border pro wrestling just has a talented roster it does it does i've had uh i had uh 
the promoter uh, Demon Blevins on. I had him on a while back ago. I believe it was last year I had him on. And uh, I want to thank you for that hookup right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good friends with him. Yeah. And then another thing, uh, David C. Russell also did a hookup for uh, Denim as well. Um, Dirtbag Dan made his debut at Battle on the Border, and he had a bloody hardcore match with the heavy metal Viking Hooks. Oh, damn. I got to look that up, man. I got to look that up. I don't know how I missed that. I guess uh, doing the Everett Lee Show and running Podcast C Network, that that right there kind of, you know, it just it gets, it's, that's my life there. <laughs> that's my life. And, damn, I got to look that up there if it's under YouTube. It's, yeah, go look on the Battle on Border Pro Wrestling Facebook page and also on YouTube. It's out there. And then from there, um, I got a great podcast with Dirtbag Dan. That is one entertaining, excuse my language, motherfucker out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. I got no filter on the air release show, so if you drop an F-bomb here and there, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly All right, fine. well, he's a cool fucker. And if Dirtbag <laughs> Dan, if you're watching this, man, you the man, and thanks for coming to my podcast and being part of Battle on the Border. The fans loved him, and Denim is going to bring him back. So, yeah. nice, nice. I love that. I love that. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad everyone got together and everything. I, I love that. I love how this all connects. How we network together and everything. I love. It's that. awesome because um, there's a lot of podcasts, wrestling podcasts, that reach out to me too, and it's great reaching out to each other because we can share everybody's thoughts and ideas. You know. Instead of going, you know, I'm going my way. It's just great sharing one another stuff. That's how. That's a great way to network for us podcast brothers to stick together. Like how there's like a a, a brotherhood of pro wrestlers sticking with each other too. Exactly. Exactly. That's what. That's one thing I love about that. I I love about I love about talking with wrestlers and talking with other wrestlers than other podcasts. For, wrestling podcast excuse me yeah what, what i meant to say there yeah you got we all got to stick together man mm -hmm. and help one another out just make it good just make it like a good po positive man oh, positive yeah. vibes baby positive vibes positive vibes positive vibes i know you and me we've talked before we because because i'd pull out when we were talking stuff talking about who we're going to get on and who we need to get on you pull out your you roll out your index i roll out my index and it's like it's it's like who are we gonna talk to? It's like have you, you're like here talk to the, talk to these people. I like I take these. I like I roll out my index and I'm like here here interview these people, man. We're like we trade back and forth, you know, people that we've not interviewed before, which is great. It, it, I love that. Oh, I do too. It's great. And for me doing that, I mean, I've gotten to know a lot of people in the wrestling business. I know tons of people, and I can go out to different independent promotions traveling. I don't know how people coming up to me that's never met me before, you know, it's like, Hey, we know who you are and all that. I mean, wrestlers and, you know, wrestling fans. And it's, it's just great to meet uh, people, you know, that listen to your stuff that mm -hmm. you've like never met, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Got some more, got some more chats, some more uh, stuff going on in the chat, man. Since since you've been on, man, the chat is on fire tonight, man. All I got to say <laughs> is that we have Joe Hamilton. He said Everett Lee show and Robin freaking Nelson on the same show. Yes, yes, you are not. You don't need to refocus your uh, television tonight because, like like the American Dream, Death of Rhodes, we in living color, baby. <laughs> We in living color tonight. <laughs> yeah, because homie don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> homie don't play that. Homie don't play that. Because when Robin Nelson and Everett Lee's on the same show, all I gotta say is It's showtime. <laughs> that's right. But I wanna ask people in the chat, are you ready to rock? I wanna rock Hey, I'm ready. Ask away. Ask anything you want, man. I want this to be a fun show. <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So um, there's pretty much none of this tonight when I'm asking you questions. Mm, that is incorrect. What? <laughs> there's none of that tonight. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's all good, man. Let's just make this fun, brother. <laughs> We're going to make it fun. <laughs> Speaking of Wrestle Popcast and everything that you do with Wrestle Popcast, I, I want to know that with all the interviews that you've done and you have coming out there, and you mentioned you had Dirtbag Dan, all the all the new new content you can, that's coming out with Wrestle Popcast for 2020. 
what should people look forward to and what podcast, what episode with a guest that you should recommend people should listen to, which they have not checked out yet? Oh, on Russell Podcast? Yes. Oh, man, I ha- I have so many. <laughs> it's, it's, hard, it's hard to choose. I mean, the Adam Rose was fun to interview. Uh, Nikita Koloff was fun. Um, Dr. David D. Schultz, he was a trip. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had Hillbilly Jim. I've had Coco Beware. Um, and if I had some top, you know, independent pro wrestlers as well, Aaron Williams, uh, Matt Taylor, uh, you know, Amber O'Neill, um, uh, uh, another hot and upcomer, young, talented athlete. Uh, sh- she goes by the name of Alice Crowley. Mm-hmm. You guys need to check her out, dude. That girl is on fire. I think I've I, I've messaged her, and she's not gotten back to me yet. <laughs> she will. Yeah, um, check out my podcast. I've I've interviewed over three hundred and forty-five uh, wrestlers. <laughs> Wow, man, that's that's a lot, and that's that's great. That's great. You have a lot of you have a lot of content. You have a lot of content out there, and everything that you do and you support indie wrestling and local wrestlers, which is great. It's fantastic, man. I, I love it. I love everything that you do, and you're passionate about it. That's that's one thing I like. I love about Robin Nelson. The man's that's passionate. Right. Yeah, I mean, he he shows it. I also do like short uh, video interviews too. I mean, I've had Sammy Callahan, Ace Austin. Um, you know, I had Leap and Lanny Poffo. Um, I can, I can, I can name several. I mean, it's just fun, you know, sharing wrestler stories, man. It is. It is leaping, leaping Lanny Poffo. You wore the ring, didn't you? Oh, I had the ring on. Yes, I did. <laughs> Rand, his brother Randy's Hall of Fame ring. You better believe it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You were the macho man's ring, aren't you? <laughs> but I didn't have there. a Slim Jim, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, I still eat Slim Jims to this day because I never ate a Slim Jim till I seen Macho Man Randy Savage mentioned that I need to snap into one. And the first thing I did <laughs> when I was a kid, I bought a Slim Jim. And when I bought a Slim Jim, I took that thing and I went like that. And I was like, I was kind of disappointed because it knew like it did on TV though, but it tasted great. And here I am, 41 years old, still eating damn Slim Jim. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I love jerky, man. Jerky's good. It is. It is. You ever, you ever had, you ever had deer jerky? Yes, I have. Um, the place where I work at, um, there's a truck driver that comes in. He does a lot of hunting, and he always brings me in uh, deer jerky all the time. God, I love it. I love it. When I lived in Ohio, my stepdad, he went hunting one winter there right around deer season, and he came back. He, he shot a couple deers, and he when he, took him, when he took it to the butcher, he ended up coming back, going to the butcher there when the meat was ready, and came back with a bunch of like really good deer steaks. Yeah. And and yeah. he also went ahead and got deer jerky, which was fantastic. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. It's yummy stuff. in my tummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too, man. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. I definitely, definitely love that. Now, with with everything we're talking about with the with wrestling, supporting local wrestling. You are involved with Future Great Wrestling. Tell tell me how that happened. How, because I remember a while back ago, before it started out, there was a thing going on where they couldn't do a show. Everyone signed a petition there where it's where they do have their sh- uh, events at. And I know you brought it to my attention about it, and I went ahead and I signed a petition. I was like, hell yeah, new promotion, let's get it going. And from what I've seen on Facebook and on YouTube, I, I love what I see. But tell me how that all started and who who's running Future Great Wrestling there. Uh, Future Great Wrestling started a year ago. We just had our anniversary show, Origins 2, which was phenomenal. Um, it is owned by Brian Levick, who lives here in Hamilton, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And it's also run by um, Cody Hawk. He's a well-known professional wrestler in the business um he also has a training school that goes through there as well and he's trained a lot of big name wrestlers in the business 
he trained uh, he trained John Moxley, Eli Drake, uh, Braxton Sutter, Sammy Callahan. Um, uh, you know, Drew Skills, Pretty Little Cycle, Shauna Reed. I can go on and on. But this is how it all started. Um, Brian wanted to bring uh, professional wrestling into Hamilton, Ohio. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, um, he went to the city, you know, to you have to go through the city, you know, get, you know, get it approved, licenses, et cetera. Right, right. So, and um, they were getting ready to do it, but there was a lot of people in the community, especially the senior citizen community, didn't want to have wrestling because they were afraid, like, the fans were going to fight in the parking lot or, you know, rob them or, you know, get drunk and all that. So uh, Brian decided, you know, to get that whole community together in the city of uh, Hamilton and, you know, go talk it out to say, hey, you know, we want to bring some great family entertainment, you know, into Hamilton, Ohio. There, there will be nothing like that. So he fought the city of Hamilton for a while, and then finally – he brought everybody in, and then, you know, everybody all agreed for it, but he was on probation first uh, to see how it goes. And then after that, um, it, it started getting bigger and popular, a lot of fans, and we get a lot of independent wrestlers from all over that just wants to wrestle for future great wrestling. And um, and like I said, and there you have it. I mean, they've been going on strong ever since. Right. That's that's amazing, man. That's that's amazing. I, I I love it. I I love I love what I've seen. I I've been watching watching here and there. Well, actually, trying to get through the still the first episode of uh, Shock uh, Shockwave. There, am I saying it right? Shockwave. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's it's future great wrestling Shockwave. Um, before the um, you know this whole crazy virus was hitting out, um, they had a weekly show on their YouTube channel, Future Great Wrestling. Subscribe to it. Um, you can see like uh, new episodes every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. when it was running before the virus. But now, if you keep on going there every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on the Wrestle Popcast um, Future Great Wrestling page, uh-huh. not Wrestle Popcast, I mean Future Great Wrestling YouTube page, yes. um, they're still showing content, pre recorded content, of course, but they're going to put it on live. I mean, there's a lot of exclusive content, a lot of matches. Uh, they still um, they never have ever aired, you know, past and future. Um, you need to check it out. Um, they have a awesome roster. Uh, I mean, I can name you several wrestlers off of Future Great Wrestling, and uh, some of Cody's students have showed up as well. You know, um, we've had Sammy Callahan. Um, you know, we had uh, you know Madman Fulton from OVW. I mean. I can I can go on. Leap and Lani Poffo. There's a lot of big stars, and there's also a lot of big name talent in the independent wrestling that want to be part of FGW because it's just great. Um, it's it's great fun family entertainment. It's a positive environment. The locker room's great. Everybody gets along. It's just like a big family. I mean, everybody wants to you know come wrestle for Cody, and Cody, you know, just has that great persona about him and that great positive attitude where everybody wants to work with Cody. And last year he got the uh, pro wrestling trainer award over at the cauliflower alley club in Las Vegas. Yeah. And then, yeah. I see yeah, that man. And then he got to go over for a bit as a, uh, as a, a guest trainer over at the performance center over at WWE for a while too. Yeah, I I seen that man. That that was awesome that he got he got trainer of the year there, and that that was great that he got to go to the performance center there in Orlando. That's just that's just right off the road there. Did I ever tell you about the story with me and JJ McGuire last year when he stayed? Yeah, there you and John went over there and all that was trying to get in, and you guys went to Hulk Hogan's Beat Shop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we went to Hogan's Beat Shop because we were filming some stuff for for KZW when he was still doing stuff with that there, JJ McGuire was. And yeah. what, ha- what happened was he, he talked to me. I didn't really want to do it because for the fact I knew we weren't going to get far, but I was surprised how far we got when we went over to the performance center. I, I told him, I said, he said, Hey, Everett, let's, let's go over to the performance center. Where's it at? And I'm like, I don't know. I know it's around here somewhere. He said, you don't know where it's at? And I'm like, hold on. So I'm looking it up. I'm looking, looking. I'm like, okay. So we GPSed it. Dude, this this place, trying to find this performance center, I kid you not. If anyone out there 
has tried to look for this place, who's come to Florida, it's like trying to find fucking Area 51. <laughs> it's, it's oh, is abs- it really? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I, I, can't, I, I shit you not, man. I shit you not. The place is like trying to find Area 51. After it seemed like five, six, eight hours, we finally... We went through, like, I forget how many residential neighborhoods. I And then they were working on the road. I had to take a round. Had to, you know. And then I felt like Brian O'Connor from Fast and the Furious is, like, rerouting, rerouting. And I'm like, shut up. Shut up. You know, rerouting, rerouting. Shut up. Shut up. And just going around. And JJ sitting there, you know where you're going? I'm like, yeah, dude. I know where I'm going. I was like, I'm following GPS. He says, it sounds like your GPS is messed up. And like, rerouting, rerouting. It's like, <laughs> but uh, ended up we we get to the place just like I've seen anything on TV when they shot stuff outside. So we get out there and everything, and we walk up to the door. You cannot see in. You, you get you check yourself out before you go in, though. But um, we rang the buzzard. We waited. We waited. <laughs> we waited. We buzzed it again, and all of a sudden this guy answered, and he basically's like, "Yeah, no one's no one's here." He basically told us that everyone's went home. If we were would have came earlier, we would have probably got to see someone. And JJ said he called ahead, talked to Kevin Dunn and everything, and pretty much we thanked the guy. Um, and then we turned around, and got in the car, and we left. <laughs> JJ said we should uh, film some stuff out here. I said, dude, I said, see that sign right there? It says no, no, no uh, pictures and for photo- you know video. <laughs> so oh yeah, yeah. But you got you got. You got to love Hurricane J.J. John McGuire. I mean, he goes way back. He's like best friends of Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart. And him and Jimmy Hart are the ones that wrote all the theme songs for back in the 80s, you know, for, you know, like uh, <clears throat> Hillbilly Jim, Coco Beware, Demolition. Yes. Uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Mm-hmm. I can just go on and on. I mean, he's him and Jimmy Hart wrote a lot of the wrestling themes, but everybody, but it all – gets recognized by Joel Johnston, who's also wrote some of the, you know, theme songs for wrestlers as well. They always, you know, always mention Joel Johnston, but they never mention, you know, Jimmy or uh, uh, John McGuire. No, they ne- they never do. They never do. And I would like to see at least one day, and he brought up a point. He probably mentioned this to you too. I'd like to see one day, I'd like to see him – JJ and Jimmy go into the Hall of Fame for all the music they did during the 80s when it went mainstream, when wrestling mm-hmm. went mainstream. I'd love to see that at least one day, him get in there to the Hall of Fame for what they have contribute to to the world of wrestling. Yeah, I mean, they've done a lot. And then he did a lot of themes for uh, WCW. Remember when Hulk Hogan was cursing that parade in that uh, Dodge Viper? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was John McGuire driving the Viper. Yeah, at Hogan's Beach Shop, he had it there in Orlando because he has one in Tampa. He has another one in Orlando. We went to the one in Orlando that time. And did you know that he he don't have that Viper anymore? He auctioned it off. Really? Yeah, yeah. He auctioned it off. He auctioned it off to a a uh, foundation uh, called uh, Kids with Legs. It's to help it, for charity. It's for kids who who's lost legs and during like like um, incidents where they had like bombings and stuff. Like say for yeah. example, like the Boston bombing when that happened there, where people lost like kids lost legs. Yeah, and that's th- a good. That's good. Yeah, he the, the video is up on YouTube. I can't believe it, but yeah, he he auctioned off that uh, ninety four. It was ninety four Dodge Viper. He auctioned that off, and someone bought it for about um, seventy seventy five thousand dollars, and the proceeds all went to that charity right there. And they got a they, they got a replica heavyweight world heavyweight title for the person who bought that Viper. And the money Hogan took that money and gave it to the give it to that charity right there to that organization awesome. that I loved it. I loved it. But when I heard he auctioned it off, I'm like, damn, I, and I, I contacted JJ and I haven't heard back from him. I said, dude, I was like that <laughs> Viper, that Viper you, you drove, it's gone now. Hogan got rid of it. <laughs> I wanted, <laughs> I told him he hasn't replied back to me yet. He hasn't replied back. He, he's, he's a hard guy to get a hold of. He's a busy man. 
he's have he has a book out and he's been doing a lot of shows and been traveling with Jimmy a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he's he does the, he he's been doing a lot there. But I know he, I know like last this weekend coming up or or here shortly he was supposed to have some appearances which he canceled because of everything that's going on with the coronavirus. Yeah. So, so he's pretty much staying at home like everybody else right now. He's pretty he ain't doing he ain't doing too much. But <laughs> no, he's not. Um I hit him up last week and then three days later he hit me back up said, Yeah, I'm doing okay, brother. That's it's good hearing from you. Yeah, that's so. that's good. That's good. I I I know I got to get a hold of him, man, because I haven't talked to him in a while. I got to see, I got to see how he's doing and stuff. I, I love the stories he shares, and you've had him mm-hmm. on Russell Pod, Popcast uh, a few times, but how how did you get in contact with him? Because you you had him on your show, and then I ended up getting him on my getting him on my show a few times. How how did that happen right there? Getting to go, getting a hold of him. Um. Uh, I just, um, I just was, you know, scrolling around, you know, social media, and um, I just saw him, and I was like, oh, this guy looks pretty interesting. And you know, I did some research and read this bio, and I go, you know, something. I wonder why no one's never reached out to him and you know, shared share the story. So um, I hit him up, and he came on, and then you know, uh, then shared the story, and then you know, after that was over, we built a great friendship. And, you know, he hooked me up with, uh, you know, Kentucky's own wrestling to go down there to meet yeah. him, you know, and help him, you know, promote that for a little bit. And then um, we just been came, we became friends ever since. And he's um, has hooked me up with, a, with, you know, a lot of wrestlers. I mean, he's good friends of Hillbilly Jim and Coco Beware. And, yes. you know, uh, so he hooked me up with those guys because he knows them pretty well. He was trying to get me with Honky Tonk Man, but um, that almost I almost got it. But you know, it was one of those hit or misses. But yeah, um, he's he's a great dude, and um, and then I got him hooked up with a, another a great guy uh, by the name of John Cosper. He's a wrestling historian, and he writes a lot of biographies on wrestlers. Right. You know, he did he did one on Ole Anderson. Um, he did one on Madman Pondo. Of course, John McGuire. Um, you know, Dr. David Schultz, and he's also did some for um, a lot of uh, young independent wrestlers, too, um, especially uh, Charlie Cruel. Um, he did a book on her, and, of course, you know, The Bomb Shelter, that crazy time-traveling tag team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, because uh, I know his book that came out, uh, yeah, John John Costler, he ended up... Uh, he he helped he helped JJ write it man and um did did you read it did you read his biography Yeah I did I I, I read it I'm the one that got uh, him and uh, John hooked up so you know he can get that book done Yeah Yeah because I know he was he was trying to he was there for a while he was trying to get that he was trying to get that uh, up and running and I forgot who he said he had before that was helping him out. And oh, that would be uh, that would be uh, Jim Phillips. Yeah, Jim yeah. Phillips. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Jim Jim Phillips. He had Jim Phillips, and then when that right there with everything that was happening with Jim Phillips, that kind of whatever. I'm trying to remember what happened, but that kind of fell through there. But then after that fell through, that's when that's when he got with John there, and he really started getting the ball rolling on getting his uh, biography out there and getting getting it out there and i was i was happy with ha- seeing that he get got that out there because i know you and me we we talked to him quite a bit here and there throughout the week and yeah he said he said when he mentioned he probably said the same thing to you he when he said he was trying to he's in the middle of getting his book out there and he wanted to get his story out there i was like yeah dude get your story out there because it's a story that no one has heard because yeah no. John John Johnson yeah John Johnson's the guy that that everyone thinks of for theme music for WWE because yeah during the late 90s early 2000s of course John Johnson yeah did some themes but JJ McGuire and Jimmy Hart are the ones that brought your favorites to life and brought those theme songs they did more theme songs than what john did 
Yeah, they seriously. did. Seriously, seriously, mm-hmm. they did. They did. I know when I was when you you were hooking me up there with. Uh, doing my first interview with him he said don't mention anything about john and i was like okay and i didn't (laughs) i didn't mention anything about that because because i was later on filled in i was like okay but i'm not going to mention it on air here but we know the story and we're going to leave it as that right there yeah keep it professional man we don't want no negativity or talking bad about anybody now we're we're gonna leave we're gonna leave it right there like that so at least you know you know what I'm talking about and I in if you we we know what each other's talking about because we know the guy Exactly we'll leave it there yeah. you know professional courtesy man we don't it's all positive man yeah. positive all no positive negative. Uh, yep. all positive there it, it <laughs> definitely is Now how how did with FG FGW Future Great Wrestling how did you get started doing the beyond the bell segments how how did that happen did was this something that you approached cody hawk with or you who who did you approach that with or did someone come to you and said hey uh, we got an idea for doing this segment here beyond the bell we want you to host it how how did that come about um well before fgw there was another wrestling promotion called cwai um, and I started going to their shows, and I got to know Cody Hawk and Shauna. And at the time, Brian Levick was a sponsor over there. And then um, I found out, um, you know, after CWAI, you know, just disappeared, um, Brian decided to do Future Great Wrestling. So I was, you know, hearing about this, and, you know, and they were trying to bring it out. So I started uh, pushing Future Great Wrestling before it even started became a wrestling promotion i was over uh, everywhere you know sh- promoting the shit out of it fgw man it's like this right. is great you know it's gonna be some great wrestling in hamilton and you know when they're fighting i just went around social media and was sharing it everywhere and then finally you know cody and brian and uh, jackson breeze started noticing me you know having you know they've known my podcast wrestle podcast they've all been on it right except for brian levick but i would love to have him on but um so I started pushing it, and, you know, they just came up to me and, you know, uh, asked me if I wanted to, you know, um, shoot some of their matches. I did for a little bit bef- before they got Michael Neary, another great guy that does all their production work, camera work, editing. Michael Neary's the man. I've learned so much from that guy. Yeah, but, huh? yeah, um, they brought me in. I was doing this, and I was, you know, doing, you know, uh, promo interviews for the wrestlers. And then from there, uh, um, I was part of the FGW family. They brought me in, and I've been there ever since. And they gave me my own show, Beyond the Bell, on there er- during Shockwave. I get my little segment, and you know, and every time you get like a big name in, I'm that guy that goes and gets the interview for Future Great Wrestling. And <laughs> and ever since then, it's just been history. Um, I I I mean I. I thank Cody Hawk and Brian Levick and, you know, Jackson Breeze so much for all the great stuff that they've done. Um, they've helped me push out my podcast. Um, you know, um, they helped me with a lot of things. They helped me get a lot of guests. And Cody Hawk's been so good to me. I, I have nothing bad to say about the guy. Um, he's just a great guy. I mean, you know, if he knows you're really passionate about it, he'll get out of his way. Shoot, um, I took two training courses with Cody to get in the ring to see what it feel like to be a professional wrestler. Oh, no and way. No yes, way. Yes, I did. You, you did. You can, ask, you... you can ask Cody Hawk on this. I did that. I went there for two sessions. Um, he gave me bumps and maybe run the rope and everything, man. Oh, those bumps hurt. <laughs> that mat is hard. The ropes <laughs> are hard. I've had like bruises for running the ropes and everything and then i and then one day i told him i was like man hey i'm done i i know it's like i totally respect what you guys go through you know through your bodies you know day after day night after night and you know and i'm glad i did it you know cody said to me he looked at to me he goes i need to tell you something robin and i was like what's that cody he goes you got you had balls to come in here to train with me but i totally respect you Wow, that's that's amazing, man. Get, getting getting a nod like that from Cody Hawk, who's 
who's been in the business as long as he has. Wow, that's that's amazing. And so I can take a bump. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, so if you see some of my interviews, I have these wrestlers that get manhandled on me. Like Madman Fulton, he grabbed me by the throat and left me up against the wall. I've been pushed by wrestlers. I haven't took a bump for a wrestler yet, but I've, hey, it's I've, coming, I've huh? Taken, yeah, I, I've taken some little abuse there a little bit while I did some interviews, but yeah. <laughs> 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 that's that's great. That's great. How 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 did that first bump feel? And, and tell me how tell me how you were set up to do that first bump. Oh my gosh! You start off first where you lean onto the bottom rope and you grab the bottom ropes first and you fall back and then you gradually go up and then you got to fall back with your when you fall back always have your um, neck tucked in and um, don't be afraid to fight. You don't fight the mat, man. Uh, you just take it, you just hit the mat, you know, don't, and it's hard to explain, but it did, yeah. hurt. it hurt. And I remember for a whole week, I was so sore from Cody <laughs> kicking my ass in the ring. I couldn't even, I had a hard time getting out of, out of my chair, had a hard time getting in my car. I felt like I was a senior sis and badly beating. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man! You you're like, <laughs> oh, I was. Trust me, it, it hurts. And at first, when I was doing the bumps, I was really scared. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to take it. And there was right. one time where I messed up and didn't tuck my uh, chin in, and I hit the back of my head. You know, luckily I didn't get like a concussion. That hurt. Oh, damn! So man. when you fall back, you always tuck your neck in, man. Always. That's that's one of the one of the things that's on my bucket list. I have a bucket list of, of stuff that I want to accomplish. I pretty much have done quite a bit already that's on my bucket list. One of the things that's on my bucket list, one of the things is take a bump in the wrestling ring. It's just to say, hey, I took a bump in a wrestling ring. That's one of that's one of the things. That I, have I on did my it bucket several list. times, and I also ran the ropes, man. Those ropes are hard. Are they? Are they? I heard you get. I heard. I mean, you have to get into them, man, when you're coming off those ropes. Man. Yeah, you got it. You got to do it the right way. If you don't, you're gonna fall right through the. You're gonna go right over the ring, right into the ground. Really, really, you have to. You have to do it a certain way. You really have yes, to do you it a certain do. way. You got to do it a certain way. Damn, damn, man. <laughs> Now I'm thinking about my bucket list. <laughs> you, you should try it. You know, um, I went in there and did it because I wanted to do it. I didn't do it to get the respect from the guys in the locker room. Right. I did it for me. I didn't do it. You know, it's like, hey, you know, so I want respect, you know, and I wasn't doing it for the whole respect. I was just doing it because I wanted to do it for me, you know. Right. You want to you want to see. <clears throat> Excuse me. There I am. High pitch. You wanted to see. <laughs> you wanted to see what it felt like what what these people go through because you've talked to them probably as much as I have or more well yeah we'll say you've you talked to a lot of wrestlers more than I have though but um I'm I'm catching up with you man <laughs> yeah you are and I hope you do man <laughs> I mean good for you man mm -hmm. I hope it all does happen for you but yeah you should you should um go to a, a certified training school um, you got to do a lot of research and what school to go to and make sure it's like well known because there's a lot of training schools out there that are not really, you know, do the legit training. Right. You need to go find somebody who's been around forever and knows what they're doing yeah. because you don't um, want to get in a ring with somebody, you know, that wasn't trained properly because both of you guys can end up getting hurt if you guys are trying yeah. to do a successful match. Yeah. 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 Don't want to do like uh, Jim Cornette says, uh, get with these backyard outlaw promotions <laughs> and learn how to bump there because that's wrong. That's wrong there. It definitely is. But I, I'm I'm excited and happy for your success that you've you've uh, accomplished here with Russell Popcast and uh, with uh, work with FGW man. And I I just want to say to the future great wrestling talent man. It's I, I love what I've seen and everything that you guys do, but I know times are hard and just everything that's going on. 
when we get over this and stuff, I am looking forward to seeing what you bring to the table with the great talent and the great product of Future Great Wrestling. I'm looking forward to seeing what's what the future brings for Future Great Wrestling. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Hey, hashtag, they're still here, and they're going to be back stronger than ever. I, I can't wait. I, I definitely can't wait. <laughs> definitely can't wait. But being being quarantined by this time where you can't really do much except um, – are you still working your day job? Uh, yes. yes yeah, my, uh, my day job is essential. It's uh-huh. Monday to Friday. I still That's have to good. go to work. That's good. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're working, man, because I know a lot of people in this country are not working or they have to work at home. But th- uh, I feel for the ones that's not able to work right now, man. And I hope everything we get we get through this, man. You get back on track. You get back to work because I know a lot of people with families and uh, that it's just it it hurts because. They can't work in their profession, whatever it is they do. But I'm glad you're working. I am. I'm glad you're working. My, I was telling you before we went live, my job kind of got restructured there with what I'm doing. Yeah. But um, we're making it meet. We're trying to make it meet and trying to just you know do our nine to five thing through the week. That's all we can do. And you know, as I, I try to support my wife and my uh, three year old daughter. And it's just, it's, it's hard, but I mean, I was telling, I was telling my wife tonight, I said, mentally, I said, by the end of 2020, there's going to be one Anthony that's probably going to be like over, over, like that's dominated the other one (laughs) that people that know me because like mentally, man, it's been, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle and I've been, I've been trying to deal with everything and, uh, I told her. I said, "By 2020, um, you're gonna you're gonna know who's living in this house here. If it's uh, the other guy or if it's Everett Lee. But <laughs> Everett Lee is more positive right now, and then that other guy because that other guy he just I don't know what his problem is, but um, that other personality I don't know. Uh, I got to talk to him. And uh, yeah, you need to. You need to <laughs> knock him. Up. You need to like." Yeah, you need to give him a Rick James slap. Yeah, I need I need to talk to him. I I think this is for the fact that he's uh he's running hid, you know, underneath the blanket of Everly. But Everly's going to take care of him for right now. But then uh, when it's time to kick his ass out, I'm going to give him a big boot <laughs> and drop <laughs> a bionic elbow on him and make him go out into the wild and become a man <laughs> with no <laughs> soy milk. <laughs> But yeah, he's he's pretty he's pretty pissed he's pretty pissed off about everything. But uh, Every Lee's a little bit more positive, so just want to let people know that Every Lee is positive. The other guy, he's kind of eh, I don't know what his deal is, but I'm gonna talk <laughs> with him. I'm gonna talk with him and see what we can come, what ingredients we come with, though. But um, yeah, with yeah, with, um, be, before this crazy coronavirus i went to the c2e2 comic convention over in chicago yeah and then saturday i went to their aew you know uh pay-per-view show Uh and um i gotta meet orange cassidy that guy's a trip i love some orange cassidy do do you do you because i i see i see what he it's it's hard for me to get into the character because of that first (laughs) impression i had with him on the on the one pay per view, that uh, AEW's first pay per view, the the first impression just didn't set right for me. And then afterwards, I've been trying to get into him, trying to get into him. But then he's fun. I I understand now. I understand what he does, and <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. I have I, at first I was like, "What is this guy doing? What's this guy doing? What the hell?" I felt like Jim Cornette going all off on him. You know, I'm like, look, it's pockets in the ring. And then I was like, wait. And then after I seen what he was doing, I said, I got it. Okay. That's yeah. enough said. Enough said. All right. That's I understand right. now what he's doing. I I get I get the whole thing now. And then I I sit back and then I and I enjoy it. I enjoy it now. So I have nothing, um, have nothing bad okay. to say about mm-hmm. him. Yeah, he's great. And then um, I went and saw Punk. 
I've met Punk like several times, and he remembered me when I came up to him. He's like, oh, I did know he? You. <laughs> yeah. What, the- I know <laughs> you. I know you. You're a like, Russell yeah. Pop guy. Popcast guy. No, it wasn't because of my podcast. He just remembers <laughs> me from me when I've seen him. And, uh, you know, I was sitting there wait, waiting to meet him, and some fans go like this. Um, are we ever going to see you in a WWE ring? Are you contracted by Vince? And then Punk looked at him and goes, dude, I'm contracted by Fox Sports yeah. Network. I'm not part of WWE. <laughs> and he had that weird look. You can hit, tell he has that look. He's getting tired of hearing that. He just had that look. It was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, how was... All right. Since you mentioned CM Punk, you brought CM Punk up. All right. Tell me, tell me about the, tell me about the first meeting with him, and tell me about the the second one right here. Okay, you just mentioned the out. first meeting. <laughs> the first meeting I met him at uh, Wizard Chicago, uh-huh. and uh, he was a cool dude, and uh, um, he liked uh, he liked my shirt, my comic book shirt. He, 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 I mean, he's a big Marvel guy, but um, I was wearing a Marvel t shirt. I was wearing this like vintage Captain America shirt. Uh huh. And he just dug it so the first time. And then the second time, I met him at C2E2. Right. At the time, he was promoting, because um, he was writing drafts for uh, you know Marvel Comics. Yeah, yeah, so, I remember um, that. I came up wearing a DC shirt. He's like, I remember you. He goes, didn't you have a Marvel t-shirt? Now you're wearing a DC shirt? And I was like, yeah. So we, so, so, we, so we started talking a little bit about comic books. You know, uh-huh. we didn't talk about, you know, his UFC fighting or wrestling. And he enjoyed it. He just loved talk, geek talking. So I was geek talking for a little bit. And then, then the third time, he just remembered me from, you know, the, the two Chicago shows. It was funny. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. I, I, think, I think he likes talking about stuff that he normally don't get to talk about with someone. Yeah. I think that's how you connect with him because I know, like like you said, he's tired of people asking him, aren't you going to get into WWE? When are you coming back to WWE? I know he's probably sick of that. And mm-hmm. having someone like yourself come up and just talk about comics, say, hey, I mean, what did what did you tell him that you were reading at the time? Did you mention anything? <laughs> um, I told him, you know, um, I checked out some of his, uh, you know, different books he wrote. Um, he wrote a rest, uh, an independent uh, wrestling comic. He was a guest writer. I can't remember what it was called, but I did read Drax. And then, you know, we talked about a little bit of DC. And CM Punk, he sh- he's just amazing. I mean, you either love him or hate him, but he he does know his comics, man. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's a big comic. He's a big comic fan. He is. I mean, he he's he's mentioned that to people plenty of times. He's a big comic fan, and that's that's amazing that you've he remembered you because probably because it's like oh god here comes the guy who's gonna ask WWE again WWE again when you get the WWE ring when you gonna get the WWE ring <laughs> you know, <it's laughs> that's like, what they all that's what they're all saying and um, when he said that I was standing right behind the guy Punk looks at me I looked at him weird and we're like rolling both of our eyes at the same time. <laughs> Next, if you you meet him again, I I dare you to say this, okay? You do another meet and greet, and he's there, and the next guy that gets behind you and says, "When do you get the WWE ring?" I dare you to look back at him and answer for a punk and say, "Never," <laughs> like Vince, and walk <laughs> off, walk off. I dare you because I like to see his expression. He hey, probably don't, like, hey, don't. Don't tip me on that, man. <laughs> do it. Do it, man. Do it. Try to practice my Vince McMahon voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Be like, never. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. Get that little deep voice. You know, that'd be funny. <laughs> oh, God. That, dude, that'd be, that'd be great. That'd be great because you'd see them. They'd be like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> they would. They definitely would. And then speaking of comics, one thing I wanted to wanted to ask you is, do you have Disney Disney Plus? Oh, I love Disney Plus, man. Um, I I enjoyed the Mandalorian. I can't wait for uh, Mandalorian season two in October. I love Disney Plus. Um, they got all the great Disney films I grew up with when I was a kid, 
And um, there's this one great Disney film I like that was on there on Disney Plus had William Dafoe, and it was based off a true story. It was called Togo, and it was about this really? dog back in um, back in the you know like 1920s where they were um, uh, had to go through this horrible storm in Alaska to get this medicine for these sick kids that were dying. Uh huh. And um, and you know, and um, they gave the recognition to uh, Balto the dog instead of Togo. Togo's the one that was the main hero, but since you know uh, Togo got too old to keep on doing the runs, they made Balto do it. So at the end, when he finally brought the medicine to the kids in Alaska, um, Balto got recognized for it instead of Togo. Okay, okay. One. I'm gonna have to check that out because my my Call wife Togo. my wife my wife signed up for Disney Plus. I love it. We we ended up getting Hulu. We haven't even watched Hulu yet, so I don't even know what's on there or how to navigate through there yet. But mm-hmm. Disney Plus, my my three year old, God, she when they put Frozen two on there, I've watched Frozen two about four times already, and it never gets <laughs> boring. It never gets freaking boring because. The first one when they came out, everyone wore out the songs, and now the second one, trying to get all the songs memorized and everything. And I love Christo's song where he's lost in the woods and he, the Queen thing with the with the you know, <laughs> I love it, I love it. But one thing I found out was the Marvel section on. Oh, yeah, the Marvel that? section, dude. Oh. I'm telling you, man, that Marvel section. So I started skimming through the Marvel section because I had never really got to sat down and actually look through what what's on Disney Plus. I come to find out, I said, "Holy shit! Are you kidding me?" They have on Disney Plus. The cartoons I used to watch every freaking Saturday morning. Good morning. That's right. They man. got the X-Men from 1995. I'm talking about 94, 95, around that time there. 93, 94, 95. They have Spider-Man on there. That's the Spider-Man from 90. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, mm-hmm. and you forgot another one they have on there too was on Saturday morning. You remember this too. They also have Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They they have that on. They, yeah, they do have that on there because I was looking at the Spider Verse. I do want to mention this right here. I want to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive more into the conversation right here. But first, there's a couple things I do want to mention. Since 1995, HighSpots.com has grown to be the company it is by serving the wrestling fans throughout the world with a great selection of merchandise. HighSpots.com has everything a wrestling fan could want, including the latest WWE and TNA releases, classic wrestling merchandise, and their HighSpots.com exclusive releases. HighSpots.com is the leading online retailer for professional wrestling and mixed martial arts offering autographs, figures, DVDs, apparel, wrestling gear, and even wrestling rings. Their largest clients include WWE, Impact Wrestling, ROH and AEW. Click on the High Spots logo on the Everett Lee Show page over on podcast.net to order. Whether you are a wrestling fan, pro wrestler, or promoter, you can find what you're looking for at highspots.com. If you grew up as a kid in the 1980s or just a fan of 1980s pop culture, then ADTs is for you. ADTs sells a huge variety of licensed t shirts featuring characters, movies, TV shows, video games, and music stars from the 1980s through today. They also have great costumes from 80s pulp culture too. ADTs.com sells officially licensed pulp culture t shirts. As you might guess, their focus is on the 1980s, but do sometimes sell other cool pop culture related tees. 80s Tees has been in business since 2000, meaning they like retro 80s stuff too before it was cool. Follow the link provided in the description section of this episode for more. 80stees.com you're listening to The Everett Lee Show. So 
so here lately in the last week or last few days, I've been binge watching Spider Man, the one I watched from the from the nineties, the mid nineties, every Saturday morning. I used to get up and I used to watch it at eleven ten I think it was ten or eleven o'clock it would come on there for uh whatever it is, thirty minutes. I'd watch it. And I love it, man. I love it. Uh, right now, I'll tell you where I'm at right now with binge watching. Okay. When I got home from work, guess what the freaking first thing I did was? I told I'm my daughter, Spider-Man. we're watching Spider-Man. And my three-year-old loves it, too. She'll sit there and watch it with me. <laughs> we were. I just got done today watching the episode where he becomes Man Spider. Remember that? Yes, I do. Yep. She freaked out and she jumped on me. She's like, Daddy, oh no. <laughs> Freaking out. And it's like, Spider Man's a monster. I said, Yes, she is. But he, everything's going to be all right, sweetie. And I'm, I'm up at the point where um, they introduced Blade. Remember they introduced Blade in the story? Yeah. <laughs> they had Blade and then they it had it where it involved with Morbius, I believe, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's going after. I, I just. I just finished the episode tonight where he, him and Blade are going after Morbius because S- S- Peter, Peter Spider-Man wants to help Morbius, but Morbius is like, ah, la, la, and it just runs <laughs> off, you know, and everything. And he's like, I'm trying to help you. And he's like floating around. He's like, Phew. you know, it's like, come on, man, dude's trying to help you. But, I love the episode with Man Spider because Craven comes back and oh, I fl- love Craven. Yeah, yeah, because Punisher, Punisher's wanting to kill him, man. He's wanting to kill him, and then you had um, you had uh, Craven coming back, and they teamed up to help cure Spider Man. But yes. I'm at the point now where Blade and him was going after Morbius because they're trying to help Morbius, and I love that, but. I also love the crossover episode they did with the X Men. That was yep. freaking fantastic. There, I love that, and that was another epi- uh, show I watched. And I'd watch Saturday mornings. There was X Men, the cartoon. Man, I mm-hmm. loved it. It come on Fox Saturday mornings was great. Man, I'd sit down with a bowl of cereal, freaking sit there and watch my favorite cartoons. I was about uh, yeah, I was about uh, fourteen, fifteen at the time, but hell. That didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I love Disney Plus, but lately I've also been binging the hell out of uh, DC Universe. And um, they have this great animated series. It's dark humor. It's not made for kids. It's Harley Quinn. Oh, really? And, oh, Harley Quinn is great, man. It's where, uh, um, you know, she left the Joker and, sh- and she's fighting the Joker and, and she was trying to fight her and earn her way to become the member of the Legion of Doom, which pretty happened. Uh-huh. And, then, and then her, uh, you know, people, Poison Ivy and all of them end up being her sidekick. So they get, didn't get to get a chance to uh, be part of the Legion of Doom. And uh, they have Bane on there and they make him like an idiot. He talks like this. I don't know what you're talking about. I am Bane. <laughs> No, they made, yeah. they made they made Bane an idiot like that. They made him yeah. like talking like that. No, yeah, it's great. It's dark humor, man. Especially when she deals with Batman, Joker. You need to watch it. Harley Quinn, the animated series, uh-huh. and um, it's like dark, violent, dark humor. It's not made for kids, right? And in, in April, uh, season two's coming out, okay. so which is pretty awesome. And then I've been watching that cheesy. A TV show on uh, DC Universe. It was made in the 70s, which was on um, Saturday morning cartoons. I was watching the, the 1970s uh, TV series Shazam. No, wait, wait, wait. They had they had a sh- Shazam had a show in the 70s. A live action show. It came back in. I was shoot. I was a little baby when it first came out. It came out in 1974. It was on for three seasons on NBC. No called, uh, way. Really? Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that. Th- yeah, and it was played by uh Jackson Bost Bostwick and then after he left it was replaced by uh John Davy. No yeah, way. and it and it was Billy Batson and his mentor. They traveled in a, a mobile R V everywhere to go um help uh teenage kids with you know, with their problems and stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it was pretty good. I'm surprised you didn't hear about that nineteen seventies live action Shazam. 
No, I, I, I didn't hear about it. I didn't even know they had, they didn't have that, man. I know, what was it, CBS. CBS had back in the, I think it was the the 80s, somewhere in the 80s or 70s. I'm probably missing. Late 70s, early 80s, okay. Spider-Man. They had the Spider-Man show. Do you yeah, remember it was, that? It was, they had Spider-Man and then they had this amazing friends. Uh-huh. And then, like, in the 80s, they did this show called the uh, the the Kid Power Show with a superhero high. And then they also had an 80s Shazam animated series with Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., and Mary Marvel, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just a big DC guy. I mean, I love, I love Marvel, too. Don't get me wrong. I love my DC. But, yeah, you need to get um, DC Universe. Um, they have a lot of great shows and series on there, man. And I can just see the look on your face when you watch Shazam. You'd be like, oh, gosh, Rob is right. This is cheesy but fun. <laughs> Did you did you speak of Shazam? Did you see the uh, new movie they put out with Shazam? Yeah, Zachary Levi. I I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun film. Is is it good? Because I I you'll heard, like it. I heard it's mostly aimed towards kids, but kids love it. I heard that. Well, the reason why it's aimed towards kids is Billy Batson is a kid who becomes a powerful. Uh, demi god, more of a man, a superhero. Uh-huh. So in terms of Shazam, he's a he's a young kid in a big man's body with superpowers. Okay, well, yeah, that's basically what the character is based off of, anyway, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Billy Batson, yeah, yeah. And back in the uh, back in the four the thirties and forties, Shazam's comic Wiz Comics was kicking Superman's ass in comic book sales. Really, really, I I didn't back know in that. The day, look it up. Yep. No way. Shazam. So Shazam's comics in the 40s, 30s and 40s. Was... It was called Captain Marvel then. And then later on, you know, Captain Marvel kind of disappeared before DC got him back. Uh huh. So Marvel was able to grab the name Captain Marvel. So they couldn't call Shazam Captain Marvel anymore. So they had to leave it to Shazam since Marvel grabbed the Captain Marvel name. Actually, oh. Shazam was Captain Marvel before Carol Danvers or the guy before her was Captain Marvel. Yeah, because he was Captain Marvel, right? Captain Marvel, yes, Marvel. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's that's probably, okay, that, that makes so much more sense right there. That yeah, look good. it up. It, 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 you'll, you'll know it's it's on there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to have to, I'm definitely going to check that out right there. Because I I heard, I knew a little bit a little bit of history there, but damn, beating Superman! Now I wonder how DC felt about that. They create this. Character. Oh, um, well, DC kind of had a little fit, so they went after uh, Shazam, and um, they were saying Shazam was like stealing like certain covers how they're like drawing the heroes like certain covers uh-huh. same as copywriting so they fought Fossa comics for a long time over that and then finally dc won and shut down shazam Jeez, that's crazy man that's that's crazy i mean during the 40s there during during world war ii comics were hot i mean mm-hmm. look at look at marvel look what they were doing captain captain america right there yeah Perfect superman time. Perfect time. Superman, ba- Batman, Robin, all of them were they did where they were fighting Nazis and stuff during World War Two. Yeah, that's that's amazing what they were what they were doing there. Um, Henry Valentine says, "Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Mister Valentine?" <laughs> I I was checking the chat right there, and uh, yeah. Is there Facebook any other live. questions on there? Pretty much um, right now. There's not really no one on there right now. Henry Valentine jumped in to say, hey, what's up, buddy? And then I started inviting a bunch of people onto the chat here. Had uh, Sean half. Let me. (laughs) My glasses are fogging up here. I may have to take them off here. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is Everett Lee, and I'm getting old. I have to squint a little bit to see what I'm saying. (laughs) Dude, Seriously. Seriously, I hate to say this. Okay, I'm going to embarrass myself right now on this live podcast. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. When I have something like it's like here, I can see it perfectly fine. But when it gets to about here, mm. 
it starts to blur on me. You're far sighted. See, I'm near sighted. I can see things up close, but far I can't. I hey, can't. I'm embarrassing myself too. <laughs> it's age, man. It's age. That's what it is. Yeah, if I okay, have something now, like, for example, this Coca Cola <laughs> can. Yeah. Okay. Calories, 140. Total fat, sodium. <laughs> Uh, blur, 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 blur. Total carbs, protein. Pull it in. Blur, 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 blur. I can <laughs> I'm getting old, man. I can say the line now, Danny Glover. I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a class. That's a classic lethal weapon line, buddy. You know your lethal weapons. <laughs> yes, I'm getting too old for this shit, man. Before before long, I'll be like. I got a guest on, but I don't know who he is. Let me get my bifocals on. Now, who was that guy you were trying to read his name? Who was that? You were trying to like, huh? like, did you like what? Um, let me pull it back up here. Uh, <laughs> let me pull the sunglasses off here. <laughs> Everly you may be getting a reboot for 2021 here <laughs> before it's over with. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies been freaking killing. I hate pollen this time of the year. My eyes get watery. I sneeze hey, like where's, crazy. Hey, hey, where's your hand sanitizer? That stuff's like gold, man. It's way over there on top of the table there. I had to put it over there so my daughter couldn't get it because okay. she, uh, I showed her what hand sanitizer was, and all yeah. of a sudden, every chance she gets, she's I'm like no. <laughs> she used to drop. <laughs> she has these little itty bitty hands, and she's like freaking like it looks like like the like she stuck her hand in a bowl of gelatin. <laughs> yeah, Henry Valent. Yeah, Henry Valentine says what's up, and uh, Sean. Oh, damn. Her oh, dad. say Sean. What did he say? He said sup. <laughs> Said, oh, okay. Yeah. Sup. 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 For Redline Radio. Do we give a shout out to Redline Radio right here on the Everett Lee show? Yeah. I should probably just remove the sunglasses. <laughs> you know? Because you wear sunglasses at night so you can, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to know why I wear the sunglasses? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. No one really has asked me. And I've never given a really straight answer on this. Yeah, why do you wear the shades? Why, why do I, why do I wear the shades? Everly wears the shades because to show tribute and respect to the ones that's come before him, Howard Stern. Oh. Howard Stern. God, um, I love that man. Wrestling, Jimmy Hart. That's why I wear them. That's why I wear the shades. Howard Stern, Jimmy Hart, Man Cow Muller. You've heard of Man Cow. Man Cow's yes. morning. Yes. Those guys, that's why I wear the shades. To show <laughs> that's why I wear these. To show respect to and honor those that's come before me. So that's why yes. <laughs> I wear the shades right there. Okay, now we got the origin of the shades. Yes. Um did you know uh, in the early 70s, Henry Winkler, the Fonz, was in a movie where he uh, 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 was playing a professional wrestler? Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. How how the hell did you find that, man? I want to know about that, man. <laughs> well, uh, my friend my friend Ripper Blackheart, who's in the wrestling business, uh -huh. uh, had a poster, a, a show that I was like, man, I never heard of this movie. So I had to go look it up, and um, I found it. So um, I bought the Blu-ray, and then I watched it on Amazon Prime. The show's – the movie's great. He starts off as an actor, uh -huh. and he was having a hard time. He was like – and then he finally got married and had a kid in New York. He was having a hard time getting acting gigs. So he teams up with that little actor from Fantasy Island Tattoos, like his manager. Uh -huh. and, and he goes and portrays being a heel – in these wrestling shows and he gets like real big as a professional wrestler. And it's funny seeing him with his little body build going, Hey, the Fonz is playing a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> the Fonz, the Fonz playing a wrestler, man. Yeah. Um, 
I have the video. I'll, I'll have to show you to so just in case you're like curious. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm going by my, I'm going by my library, and this is what the name of the movie is. Okay, the one and only, and you say it's on Amazon Prime. Yep. Dude, that's that's amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get that. I'm gonna have to get that. So it's a pretty it's a pretty good movie there. Oh, it's funny, man. It's 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 a great movie. Henry Winkler is great. And he portrays these different wrestlers. First, he portrays a uh, a Nazi, uh huh, a wrestler, and everybody's like booing him and all that. And he portrayed another heel, and then finally he grew the blonde hair and dressed like the pink, and he was kind of acting like a gorgeous George type of a wrestler. Right. <laughs> That's amazing, man. I love that. I love. And that. it's directed by Car Carl Reiner. Really, really. Yep. Damn, I I didn't even know I didn't even I didn't even know this existed. And you said this is around the seventies. Is this right around the time like after or uh, during no, Happy before, Days? Um, before he became the, before Happy Days and before he became the Fonz. Oh damn! Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to check that out. I may I may sit there tonight uh, after we get off this show here tonight, and I may pull it up. Watch it. It's great. Uh, it, it it's just it's just neat seeing Henry Winkler. You know you know, uh, an actor acting like a pro wrestler in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is nice. That is nice. And, um, we, we do got some more viewers jumping in here on the, uh, Ooh. who are the, they? Who are they? Yep. Yeah, we hi. have Redline radio has joined us here. Hey, Redline, Redline radio, radio LLC. Check those guys out. They're a good show, man. They are, I man. Know. They are. I love them. I was, did you did you check out last? I think it was last week or two weeks ago. I called in on the scoop Friday night on the scoop. No, I didn't get a chance to, but I do. Lo I lo I love those boys though. Yeah, who Cleveland. else is on there besides Redline Radio? So far, they are, and Henry nice. Henry Valentine's on there right now. Uh, David Wallachek says uh, is in the house. Redline Radio <laughs> LLC doing some self promotion right there. Love it. And uh, I replied back. He said, chilling at home, watching your show. We have uh, Jeff. Um, let's pull the shades off again because I can't see <laughs> shit. Jeff, uh, I can't say your last name from Redline Radio. Don't hate me. I love you. I love Redline Radio. What you guys do up there in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. I love it. Um, I'm taking the shades off so I can see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> yeah, I got the shades on still, but technically. But, yep, love the Redline Radio crew. I love what they do and everything and stuff. Uh, shout out to those guys right now tuning in tonight here. As I talk with Robin Nelson of Wrestle Popcast and Future Great Wrestling Beyond the Bell. Right. And, <laughs> Robin, what since we're talking about streaming and what we're watching at home and stuff, what what would you recommend if I jumped on Disney Plus there? Because I'm I'm waiting for um, uh, what is it uh, the Winter Sol Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision. Wow. I'm waiting for those to show up, and they haven't showed up yet. But, uh, well, I'm wait I'm, I'm waiting for that. I'm also waiting for the Mandalorian season two, but that's way in October. Yeah, but on Disney Plus, man, what do you um, recommend? Whatever, uh, uh, Togo, T O G O, with William Defoe. That's a great movie, man. Everybody's got to watch that. It's a great family film about Togo, the dog. Okay. And another one is I've seen all the films. I, I just got done watching Toy Story Four. I yeah. recommend that. The Toy Story films are great. And then for the for the Marvel cartoons, man, um, I'm gonna have to say the uh, '90s X Men and Spider Man and His Amazing Friends. Yeah, I I love I love Spider Man. I definitely I definitely love Spider Man. I, I love I love the early mid nineties Spider Man there because I used to watch it every Saturday morning, and there was a lot of episodes on there that I haven't watched, so I've been binge watching it. I was uh, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I was laughing at the one 
with the time stone. Remember the mafia boss? He wanted to become young and he got young and he's like, I feel great. I yeah. feel, he was like, I need to get the stone so I can become young again. And then when he gets it, he's like, I feel great. And all of a sudden it kept on making him younger and he turned to a baby again. <laughs> He's trying to take that's, Kingpin out. That's that. I was laughing at the episode because I was like, I was like, Doctor Connors fucking told you. And then you know what's funny? I laugh at sometimes because it gets a little cheesy on the Spider Man show. Because when um, when Doctor Connors was kidnapped by uh, Silverhair, and then when he comes busted out as a lizard, he's like, ah! They're like, oh, <laughs> Kingpin sent him. He's like, dude, he's wearing the fucking out lab outfit. It's Doctor. That's funny. Um, uh, sure that. So, speaking of streaming, um, have you been watching the Dark Side of the Ring? Did you watch the latest one on uh, Chris Benoit? No, no, no. I I wanted to I wanted to see that. It what? Where do you watch Vice at? Is it on cable uh, TV or what? Yeah, it's on cable TV or you can stream it online. Um, that uh, documentary was fucked up. And, you know, and um, I feel nice. sorry for his son, uh, David Benoit. He yeah. looks dead on like his dad. And they won't let – they give him a hard time. And he's an innocent bystander out of this whole thing, you know, because they're giving them, you know, you know, crap about his dad. And he had nothing to do with it. And WWE should put woman in the Hall of Fame because she's also innocent in all this after, you know, Chris killed her. She's been around forever in the wrestling business. I think women should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, I I agree because that story, that story right there, that that was that was that was bad with what happened with Chris Benoit. There, do they did they go? Do they even talk about like conspiracy theory about how he was murdered or? What, what did they? No, they got for? back into it. Where from all the concussions over the years that affect his brain, that kind of made him messed up in the head, and they thought he was like roiding out a little bit and got crazy. And then you know, after his best friend Eddie Guerrero, you know, passed away, it, it just it just got him into becoming a different person. Man, he couldn't live without Eddie Guerrero, and he started being distanced. It, it was a deep documentary, though, man. Yeah. Yeah, because that that's a tragedy right there. I mean, just everything that happened. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna definitely gonna have to check that out. I I think it's up on YouTube. I saw something like that, and someone told me I need. It's to on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. Okay, okay. Because yeah, someone someone mentioned to me. They said you need to check that out because it's Dark Side of the Ring. How many episodes they have out already of that? Of that? Uh, this is second season. So far, it's one, and the next week coming up, they're going to do it on New Jack. Oh, okay, New Jack. I remember New Jack, man, from ECW days, man. He has that. His head looks like it's smashed in. He looks like a Klingon from Star Trek. His Klingon head. Well, that's from the. <laughs> that's from razors and everything and stuff, you know, from yep. all the hardcore match, man. ECW, man. And then another messed up documentary I watched, you need to watch it on Netflix, The Tiger King with Exotic Joe. That was a messed up documentary, man. My, my he's wife. Like this, yeah, he's, a, he's this gay redneck guy that owns a zoo of 227 tigers. He married like two straight guys that were in love with them in the Tigers. <laughs> and then it went towards like conspiracy for trying to murder somebody. Man, you know, it's messed up. And he also has some country videos out there too, country songs. He uh -huh. can sing. He did some country music videos, man. They were messed up. Damn, that's, that is messed up. <laughs> that and is... he looks like Enzo Amore. I could have sworn that's Enzo Amore's twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo Mori. I remember that, man. I remember that. How you doing? You need to watch it. Tiger King. You need to watch it, and after you binge it, you need to call me and tell me what your thoughts of it was. I'm I'm gonna have to I'm yeah, I'm gonna have to. Because I, I was gonna say my wife she wanted to, she wanted to watch that. My my wife wanted to watch that. And she said, I wanna see that. I wanna check it out and see what that's about. And I said, Okay. 
Okay. I was going through looking. I'll tell you what one show I want to watch on there. I watched a preview yeah. for it. I said, damn, I got to see this. Ragnarok. Oh, Thor Ragnarok? No, no, no. It's called Ragnarok. It's based off of the Greek mythology of Thor. That's Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Um, I, okay, I have to talk about Watch the trailer of that because you're like, damn, because the guy they have, he looks like a young Thor and then his brother looks like a, Yo a Loki, but they're battling like a god or something that's greater than him. And they're like, what are you? And yeah, it's called Ragnarok. That's what the TV show is called. I want to start speaking watching Netflix, it. Yeah, speaking of Netflix, the big show's coming out with a sitcom too where he has a family. Yeah, I seen something <laughs> like that. I seen something like that. I was watching Broken Skull uh, Sessions with Steve Austin when Big Show was on there. Did you see that? Did, did you yeah, work? I did. I love Stone Cold's podcast, man. I do, too. I do, too. I I loved how he talked with The uh, Undertaker, Goldberg, and Big Show. And I didn't watch the Bret Hart one yet. Did you see that one? No, I still need to watch that. That's that's next on my list. And ever since, you know, because uh, of the lockdown, there's hardly nothing to do. I've been checking out a lot of stuff. I never had enough time to watch, which is yeah. pretty great. So I yeah. think I think I think from all this stuff, it's given people a chance to actually sit down and watch some stuff. Because I mean, hell, I got on Disney Plus and I discovered uh, they had the. Spider-Man cartoon, and I'm exposing yep. my daughter to it, which she's loving it. She comes and runs and brings her little Spider-Man doll that I got her, and she's like, Spider-Man! And we sit <laughs> down there together and watch it, and she she loves it. She loves it, and when the intro comes on, she's like, Daddy, sing it. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, radioactive Spider-Man. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, anything for my daughter. Anything for my daughter. It's like, just don't make me juggle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this this has been really fun. Wrestling, geek talk, movies. This, this, is, this, is, this has just been very fun. And it's been a while since I've been on. Um, this is the most fun I've had so far, man. Oh, man. Me too. Me too. Me too. And everyone that's been viewing tonight, man, they have been... We got like a seven people right now viewing right now. Um, <laughs> David Wallachek said, I just watched that. I don't know which one. He said both of them. So, oh, okay. yeah, whatever, whatever we're talking about there, he's probably what you were mentioning right there. And, of course, I mean, hell... I mean, with everything going on, man, why can you not get on and watch and binge watch your favorite shows? You know what's funny, though? I was watching uh, last week when I got on Netflix. I was seeing what was the number one shows been watched. It was stuff that had to do with, like, outbreaks and viruses. I'm like, come on, man. There's more better shit on fucking Netflix to watch than that, <laughs> you know? Oh, crap. Let's just, let's just watch it. Let's just watch V. The lizard people. <laughs> this is humans. <laughs> that was a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. watch. Let's watch V. The final battle. <laughs> hey, ask me how many episodes I've watched of Breaking Bad. I love that show, and I also love Better Call Saul. So, how many episodes have you watched of Breaking Bad? One. I watched the pilot, and that's it. <laughs> Hey, I'm running a podcast network. <laughs> yeah, look at Robin, man. <laughs> He's about to jump through this computer and smack me. Man. Look, look, see my hand? I'm probably going to grab it and grab your hand and just turn it going. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. I, I did watch uh, the first three episodes of Alter Carbon. Carbon. I love that. Alter Carbon's good. I haven't got a chance to watch the second season. Yeah. But the first season was pretty good. And then another great show on there, too, is um, Lock and Key. I love Lock and Key. Okay, okay. David Wallachek says Tiger King and Ben Wall. He's watched both of them. And he's watched Adam. Oh, okay. All right. You're Never mind. <laughs> he's referring to someone. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. Um, my but eyesight. like I said, Tiger King is actually Enzo Amore. 
that that has to be him, you know, or his twin brother. They look alike. They they have to be like Tiger Brother. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna have to sit down with my wife and check it out. I know. Well, check this out. You know, they get that one show that's on Netflix about the mafia or the um, New York New York mafia, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The Irish yes, mafia. I... My wife told me because she's from New Jersey. She told me, dude, seriously. She said they talk about her grandfather on that show. I said, what? She That's said, yeah. freaky. Yeah, because he, he was he's from Hell's Kitchen, and he was part of the Irish Mafia. I looked oh over at God. her. I said, God dang, man. I said, if I piss you off, don't put a hit out on me. Uh, you know, it's even funnier than that. Uh, when I gr I grew up in California all my life, but I live in the Midwest. Right. But um, right. I lived in a town in California called Bakersfield, and growing up, um, uh, right next to my mom and dad's house, we lived next door to some of the members of the Hell's Angels motorcycle gang. Damn. My neighbor. And, yeah, right. they were great. They were great neighbors, man. Um, they were very, I mean, they they were cool. But you know, they were doing, you know what outlaw bikers do, you know, yeah. gun run and sections. Well, they took a liking to my, um, to me and my family and they treated us really good. And then one of the main guys came up to me and said, I didn't know this. This little kid, he goes, if anybody messes with you, you let me know and I'll, I'll take care of it. And I never thought of it. And then like years later, I thought about it. It's like, man, he would have killed somebody for me if I said <laughs> something. <laughs> and, and, and then right next door, Floyd, they called him Pigger. He uh -huh. was like up in there. And um, the police came to their house and unburied in the backyard. He, like, killed and buried his wife in the backyard. Damn, man. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy, man. And this is this is a true story. I loved it. They were great neighbors. They treated us real good. But, you know, we, we minded our business. And, they, you know, they did their thing. We didn't really pay attention. So, yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> I have a biography book about the uh, about the Hell's Angel which I haven't got to read around, you know, read yet. But my neighbor, she came over one day and she wanted to borrow a couple bucks, something to, you know, five bucks or something to get a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> so I'm like, here, here's five oh, bucks. Oh, five bucks and a pack of cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds like you were going to buy, buy a, a Barbara Streisand biography like Yentl or something. <laughs> 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 but I let her borrow it and we we're sitting there talking about books and stories and stuff. I said, Hey, check out this book. And I showed her the hell's angels book. I kid you not. I kid you not. She looked at that book and she flipped the fuck out because she is part of the outlaws here in Daytona. Well, we have the iron horse motorcycle gang here outside of Cincinnati, the iron horsemen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're really big too. But a, another biography to read. Um, I got done reading Roddy Piper's latest biography right before he died. Yeah, I, I met him a couple times, and then um, I had his daughter Till Piper on the pod on my podcast. Yeah, which was great because she's getting into the wrestling business. She wrestles for a while, women's wrestling. Surreal. Yes, yes. And she was she was very fun to talk to. Her and her brother Colt wrote the rest of the book after he passed. And if you want to read a good uh, biography, pick up Roddy. My dog, I don't know what the hell he's doing, man. He's is he licking your, is he, is your dog humping your leg right now? Is that no, no, like? he's tripping. He hears the neighbors across the uh, outside and he's like, and it's like, I'm in the middle of a fucking show here. <laughs> That's I'm sorry. But, um, the chat is on fire here, man. He's uh, David Wolacek wants to ask you what NASCAR driver is from there. From uh, I can tell you, um, his uh, dad was my uh, PE teacher, and my sister graduated with him. And we used to watch him at uh, Mason Moran in Bakersfield and Bakersfield Speedway. Uh, Kevin Harvick. Nice, nice, excellent. And another famous race car driver that's also from Bakersfield as well is. Uh, Indy car driver Rick Mears. Nice, nice. Uh, is awesome. So yeah, his um. So uh, Kevin Harvick's dad was my uh, PE teacher in high school, and he um. Then Kevin graduated the same year as my um, sister from high school. Yeah, um, Kevin Harvick, 
is a Bakersfield native um, like me, and you look at him, he's like real big in the NASCAR. Um, I was never a big Harvick fan. Um, I've been a big Jimmy Johnson fan when he first started, and I'm sad this is his final um, season, but it's a shame you can't, you know, people can't go see NASCAR, you know, because of this whole crazy virus. Yeah, I I see that. George, George G. Ill said he just revoked your man card for not watching Breaking Bad. Ha, 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 ha. I replied back, <laughs> ha, ha. Let's see. Uh, too much content that is out for me to find time. <laughs> hey, time after you're done watching Breaking Bad, watch. you have much better call Saul. So, yeah. Uh, will get around to seeing the whole series. <laughs> series sometime. Boom. Eventually, I will, man. There's so much content out there. Yeah, it's the ridiculous, man. There's so much stuff out to watch. Me and my wife, we sat down and watched the first episode. I was like, "Damn, this is great." I know they only got five seasons, so one of the one show that we did watch the hell out of was we got into was watching Mad Men. That was a good Mad show. Mad Men is awesome. Oh God, I That's loved. Fucking Mad Men because I love that. Mad Men was great. It was. And, yep. And then speaking of what we're talking about, biker gangs, mm -hmm. man, you gotta watch Sons of Anarchy. Oh, that God. show was the shit. Yeah, right here. I watched all seven seasons from, from season one all the way till it ended. You but, gotta watch Jets. I've met the cast of Sons of Anarchy. I got pictures of Jackson all of them, man. I seen that, man. I seen that. Did you have you watched the Mayans MC? Oh yeah, I watched the Mayans, but it's not as good as the Suns. Oh and come I'm on, mad. dude! Season two was great. Season was two right, was freaking mad. great. It was but great. I'm mad they got they fired Kurt Sutter, man. Well, it's because Kurt, Kurt, his uh, his ego got the best of himself. That's why he got too big for his britches. He he had good intentions though, but. Come on, he he pointed this out, man. If you're gonna do, if you're going to do a show based off a motorcycle Mexican Latino gang, you need to it's have some. Series. Yeah, you need to have that in it because he was clueless about it. He was he was he was clueless about. I love, I, like I said, I love the Mayans, but Sons of Anarchy will be to my heart. But I did enjoy the Mayans, and I do agree the season two of the Mayans was good. I want to see them do it of the first, uh, the uh, the prequel of Sons of Anarchy. You know, the the, the first, first nine. members, first nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't know why Kurt Sutter didn't go that route because he should have. I would should have. Um, um, I would have waited on the Mayans. I mean, if he wasn't quite sure how to do a Mexican, you know, outlaw gang, he should just did a, the prequels first, and then if he was going to do the Mayans. You know, he should have, you know, did a little bit more research or found somebody in a, like a, a, you know, like a Mexican, you know, outlaw biker gang. Look at, look at, um, look at Jax. He, he uh, followed a, a, a known biker gang to get the rope, Jax Teller, so he can play it right. Yeah. Yeah. He, <clears throat> he did. He, he, Charlie did. Hunnam. Yeah. Charlie Hunnam. Yeah. Charlie Hunnam. He's a great actor. I watched a movie of his a while, a few years ago. It's probably still on Netflix. If anyone ever watches it, it's called Man on a Ledge. It not not oh, the one, one, not the one with um, what's his name from Avatar. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, played about Terminator. That, yeah. It was actually Charlie Hunnam. It was on Netflix called Man on a Ledge. That was I, that was really good. It showed his range as an actor. And then another movie he was good in too. He was in it with. Um, uh, it was called The Gentleman by Guy Ritchie. Uh huh. That came out that had Matthew McConaughey in it and uh, Charlie Hunnam and um, it was like a British like revenge uh, type of movie. Uh, it oh, came out recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah, like yeah. it? Charlie Hunnam was great. He was he was pretty smooth in there, man. He was smooth. 
You know, did you know that he was supposed to play um, Christian Grey in the Fifty Shades of Grey movie, but had to he pull turned out? It down. Yep. Yeah, because yep. of a, he was committed to uh, doing Sons of Anarchy. But I guess I'm glad he didn't go with that franchise because it kind of bombed because the books were so much better. You read the books? No, no, no. My wife oh, thought, did. Okay. My then wife I did. I, I sat down. Take your man card. I would have to take your man card if you read that. <laughs> talking about talking about man card, Robin. Let me say that uh, George says, in all fairness, he has to pull mine too. I've only seen the pilot too. <laughs> hey, hey to, you, to you guys that only saw the pilot of you know Breaking Bad. After that, you guys got to watch Better Call Saul. That is such a great show. Now, let me ask you, does Better Call Saul take place after Breaking Bad or before it? Um, before it, and then, yeah, it takes it takes it before it, yep. And then later on in the seasons, it gets where he meet, he meets them and stuff, yes. Okay, okay. because It's I like know, the origin story of, it's, it's an origin story, like, yeah, how oh, it started. Okay, okay, because I know, I know, I know the premise of Breaking Bad. Uh, a phys uh physics science teacher who gets cancer, uh -huh. and he knows he's gonna Sell die, that. and he wants to set his family up where basically they're taking care of if he dies, and he gets into doing about meth, and he gets with Jesse. That was the that was fucking funny. It, 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 it's it's a great show, and if you want to watch another great show, something like that, watch Weeds about the the housewife in the cul de sac selling weed. Oh, dude, let me let me tell you about weeds. Let me tell you about weeds. Now, I you, you'll laugh at this here. Okay, my my brother. Okay, my brother had me set up on his uh, Nintendo Wii for his uh, grandchildren. The uh, net for Netflix. I told him all about it. I set it all up for him. I said, "There you go." Okay, he sets. I set it up for him. And I didn't see my brother for probably about a month because we got so busy. So I called him up one day, and this is my older brother, and I said, "Hey, um, what's the uh, what's going on?" Um, he's like, "He's like, I want to come by and hang out." And he's like, "Yeah, man, come on over." So come over, and we're sitting there talking and stuff and everything. And when we come in, he stops watching weeds and he's like dude i'm almost done watching this show on weeds he already been watched about like five or six shows already i'm like what weeds is great and man. weeds was one of them man and he was almost done with it and he was telling me about it he's like oh dude you gotta see it you gotta see it because he's all about that you know <laughs> <laughs> he's all about that man he is all That's about awesome. that I, I i love it i love it so i i hooked him up with the I hooked him up with the Netflix there, and he just went crazy looking watching shows. And I mentioned, "Yeah, I gotta watch Mad Men." Two weeks later, I come back. I'm like, "Hey, man, you see Mad Men?" And he was like, "Yeah, man, I watched all of it. That was a great show." And he's like, "Yeah, we're watching Orange Is New Black now." I was like, uh, hey, "Damn!" If you like Orange Is New Black, you gotta watch the British version of it called Wentworth. That's some. Good, that's some pretty awesome shit, man. I heard about that. I heard Wentworth. Yep. I heard I heard it was basically like the orange news is the new black there. But it's a I, British series. It's a British series, ain't it? Yep. I heard what was it I was watching on Netflix? Um I've been slowly watching getting through the office. I'm on Oh, which two. one? The Br the British version or the American version? No, the um uh, the American version. I'm already on Oh, the American both both versions are good. I like them both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like. So far, I'm already in the second season of the, uh, of the the Office. So every once in a while, I'll throw on an episode and watch a couple episodes, and then I'll quit. I know there's like nine seasons, and I know some funny stuff happens along the way. <laughs> I was watching a video uh, on YouTube, like a best of, where Jim messes with uh, Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> where he puts all his uh, office stuff in jello and he wraps his desk up with like Christmas paper <laughs> and he's like how long you take to do that five minutes he's like oh you're some professional rapper he's like yeah. and he, in his desk and then he knocks himself out with the phone with the nickels in the phone <laughs> I love that he's like 
<laughs> well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you watched Office because because if you said you watched Gilmore Girls, I would never look at you the same. <laughs> I was watch back in the day before the CW became the CW. It was uh, it WB. Was UPN, yeah. yeah, it was WB. Or, yeah, UPN and WB came together to form yeah, the uh, uh-huh. CW. Well, Gilmore Girl, Girls was on WB. I re- remember I was at my friend's house, and the first night they were watching watched something. It. No, 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 no. I didn't watch it. Well, I watched the first five minutes, and this is what happened. Dude, this is what happened. Okay, I watched the first five minutes. Okay. And we just got done watching something that was on prior. And that came on. And after we watched the first five minutes, I looked over at my friend. I looked over at his girlfriend at the time. And I looked. And I, we all, we both looked at her. She said, what the hell was that? Click. <laughs> turned it off. <laughs> she turned that shit off and she never watched it. <laughs> like I said, it's it's not like Dawson's Creek. <laughs> but yeah, that's what she was watching. She liked Dawson's Creek, but but she couldn't watch that. But a few weeks later, she was watching it and I walked in and me and my me and my friend were wanting to play PlayStation. We went to play Castlevania. On the, uh, God, I love that Anna. I just got done watching the third season of Castlevania on Netflix, the anime series. Mm-hmm. That series kicks ass, but I did like the Castlevania games too. Yeah, I grew up. I grew up watching uh, playing the Castlevania games. I did watch season one of that. I haven't watched season two or three. Dude, it, it, it's fucking good, man. <laughs> Is it? How good? How good? I love it. It's good. It's it's a fun anime series man i love castlevania nice nice the chat man dude chat is going off tonight man with us because <laughs> i'm on here that's yeah. why <laughs> george I'm says it's both of us okay and all okay we already talked about that okay he he put up again he says i've been hunkered down with my son we've cleared marvel's iron fist and the defenders nice two really good shows on there actually you want to know something you're you you pull my man card on this one dude i'm sorry i've watched i watched the first two seasons of jessica jones i watched i I, I like jessica jones yeah i watched the first punisher i still have not got through the first season i'm taking your man card away from you the punisher series was good i've not got through the first season yet man because it drags it's dragging man i'm dude it gets it gets dude it gets bad dude dude. what castle's a bad motherfucker i know he is you got like john bersonel shane from the walking dead yeah he was he's a great actor he's a great he's a great actor he's a great actor but but now I've I gotten up to the part where the guy's in his backyard digging a hole and Frank's trying to figure out what the hell to do and he goes in and he beats a bunch of people and then it gets dull for there and I'm like come on I want to see something come on I want to see something I want to see you blow shit up you're the punisher come in there and be like I'm Frank Castle I'm waiting for that, uh, see, man. They're know? good. I also, I also like the DC shows, man. The DC yeah. shows were good. Like Arrow. You know how uh, Stephen Amell finished the final season of Arrow? No, uh, no, 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 I'm not talking about Arrow. Let me let me finish. Hey, let me finish my sentence. You know how he did the final season, and you know how he's a wrestle a pro wrestling fan. Yeah, he wrestled in WWE, and then he wrestled over at AEW. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's cut. He's coming out with a new TV series coming out on Stars where he plays a professional wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard something about that. I heard something about that. I I heard that he's Yeah, because Arrow Arrow ended. He he finally ended Arrow and I don't know how that ends because that's another not show me and my wife's trying to catch up on because I'm she not loves saying Arrow. Nothing, but yeah. But he's going to be playing, portraying a pro wrestler in a TV series on Stars. Nice, nice. Let me ask you: Am I going to be satisfied or disappointed how Arrow ends? You're going to be disappointed. Nah, he dies. Everyone dies. Okay, we'll leave it as that. 
<laughs> no, you just have to wait and find out, little man. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about the DC shows George mentioned there, or the Marvel shows, excuse me. I yeah. watched, yeah, I watched the first two seasons of Jessica Jones. I watched Iron Good. Fist season one. I watched the first two seasons Daredevil. Okay, I watched the Defenders. I love the Defenders. So Defenders then I, was awesome. Then I went back and watched first uh, the second season of Luke Cage, which I loved. I loved that, and I just Sweet Christmas. I started. I just started watching the first three episodes of Iron Fist season two. Yeah, Iron Fist two was good. I wish they did another season. I I enjoyed second season be, um, than the first season. Uh-huh. Second season was more better. Right, and then. Then speaking of superhero shows um, on Amazon, um, I love The Boys, and I can't wait for The Boys Season 2. The Boys is awesome. Let me ask you, Marvel on Disney+, Plus, The Runaways, and that other show, have you watched shows that's on there? I watched The Runaways. The Runaways is a, is a fun show. It's all right. I'm, I wasn't... I didn't really get into the runaways, but it's all right. And mm-hmm. then I tried to get into uh, Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. I couldn't get into that, and I was a fan of the comic series back in the day. Yeah the the comic the comic was great. Cloak and Dagger the comic was great, but it's just a lot of people. When I heard about the show, I was like, "This is going to be great," but but a lot of people, I felt like it was them, boring. Was it? How boring was it? Um, I couldn't get into it. It they try to do it, but I rather read the comic series all over again because you know I own the comic series. I wouldn't even recommend it. And then speaking of Marvel, I want to see the new mutants, man. Yeah, David, let me uh, pull pull this up here. Yeah, new mutants. I want to see that because that looks awesome. They had to push that back, like with a lot of other movies there. Um, yeah, like Wonder Woman 84, they pushed that back. I'm dying to see Wonder Woman 84. Yeah, they they, they pushed a lot of movies back. Um, I'm still trying to figure out who Dominic Toretto is fighting in Fast and Furious 9 because I just can't see them. You want me to tell you who's fighting? You should know that. I, you can't see me. <laughs> hey, Dominic, Paul Walker. I mean, rest in peace, Paul Walker, but yes. you can't see me. <laughs> Let me uh, let me check out the chat right here. Uh, David Wallachek says, "You guys are going to be mad that I've never seen a Marvel movie." No, we we're not mad at you, man. Because no, we're not mad. I'm a huge DC guy, mm-hmm. but I'll go see the Marvel films. And I know the DC films haven't did well, but the TV shows and animated movies have. But you know, I like I like to watch Marvel too. But I'm more of a DC guy. Yeah, I've been a DC guy since I was eight years old. But okay. George says, uh-oh, Dave, and Dave Olichek says, every release show, you're live on redlineradio.com. Thank you. Thank you for that, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. We're live And on- his guest, Robin Nelson from Wrestle Podcast. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Plug, plug, plug. Plug it, man. Hey, thank you, Redline Radio. You guys are the shit. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're they're up in your neck of the woods there, man. They're from... They're yeah, right they are. There. I'm they're- in Cincinnati, and they're in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're in Cleveland. I, I spent... I spent three months up in Cleveland when my uh, stepdad had uh, had kidney cancer and my mom was up there for from the I'm trying to think here. I think it was it was about three months into about midsummer because I remember taking my mom to go see the mummy returns went up there in uh, Ohio. I worked at the travel lodge hotel. I worked like the midnight till like six in the morning shift. When That's a scary hotel. I bet you probably saw all walks of earth going into the travel lodge. Oh, you want to see something? You want to hear something scary, dude? This will this will blow your fucking mind right now. You want to you want to hear you want to share a story? What happened? <laughs> Tell me what happened at the ew travel lodge. Okay, I was working the shift, and I I didn't really pay too much attention about when like when people would come in and check in for rooms. Because I was working at the front desk, I'd basically give find a room that I had on a list and like, all right, we'll put you here, we'll put you there, money, thank you, whatever. Okay, this couple came in, and from what I can remember, they came in, they checked in, took their money, everything. 
They went to their room. Well, the next morning, right before I left, I was sitting there with the with the head person at the travel lodge. This is up in around Brookdale, Ohio. Okay, you know where okay. Brookdale is, right? Yeah, I've heard of yeah. Brookdale. I've never yeah. been there, but I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, I was staying out there with my mom and my stepdad because I was helping them out because my stepdad's kidney cancer came back because he already had uh-huh. one kidney removed. So this was around 2001, summer 2001 before 9-11. So I went back up there. It was, okay, it was March till June. That's when I stayed up there. Again, I went back to Ohio. So I was up there, and I was working at the Travel Lodge. And that morning, I was with the the manager of the front desk. We're going over some stuff, uh, some stuff that happened, some new updates or whatever was going on. All of a sudden, we heard it sounded like bloody damn murder. Like the head of house cleaning comes running into the lobby. Ah! Ah! <laughs> She's like, no! and she didn't speak English. She was like, la, 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 just all on, 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 on. She was, um, she was Asian. We're like, what the hell is going on? And she kept pointing. So she grabbed her, okay. And grabbed me, and I'm like, okay. We went out, and it was down about, um, it was about the last room on the second floor. It was two something. <laughs> so while we're getting dragged upstairs, my the front desk manager looks at me and says, do you know anything about this? I said, probably not right now. I'm in shock just like you. <laughs> so we get up there. We get up there. She opens up the door and she's like, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> I shit you not, Robin. The whole room was filled with fucking dildos. Shut the fuck up. There was a dildo party going on. <laughs> it was filled. Oh my God. It was filled with dildos. Oh. And, and even <laughs> you go in the bathroom, I kid you not, they were sticking on the wall. All sorts of colors. It looked like What Rain- kind of party was that? It looked like Rainbow Bright came in there and she basically fucked herself. And she you know sh- and she squatted rainbow colors all over the place. I'll tell I'll, I'll tell you something. Hoover <laughs> did that. Probably couldn't sit the next two days. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. They they crawled out of there, but uh, if they did, um, they couldn't sit for the next two days. But they probably had a smile on their face. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I kid you not. I kid you not. That's that's oh. that's what happened. That's what oh, happened. That is man. freaky out. Man. I know. I know, ain't that ain't that shit freaky? <laughs> That's some stuff, man. When you uh, experience in the workplace, man, you definitely you definitely do. You experience some of the stuff like that. But um, it was that that was crazy. That was one of those crazy times there, man. One of the, the things. The dildo room. Yes, the dildo room. I shit you not, man. Dil, d- like 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 that name, dildo baggins. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Ah. Anal. <laughs> <laughs> that person probably um that person probably had about a uh, 33 and a third chance of actually walking out of there alive. <laughs> that is that's so goofy, man. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. There was probably a prostitute, man. I I checked in this young couple one night, and they were in there for about uh, an hour, and they came out, and they paid for the room and left. They left. They basically came in, came out, and left and stuff. And it was like, uh... I'm coming! (laughs) (laughs) They were probably part of that dildo room party, probably. (laughs) Well, they were. They probably were. Who knows, man? Speaking of, hey, speaking of, speaking of dildos, I'll tell you something funny. Um, I went to Hustler Hollywood, you know, to go get a, a, a gag gift for, for, for my friend's bachelor party. And I was going in there, and they had a, a dildo seminar with the couples. And they were talking about the, 
how uh, how couples like to use dildos on each other, and I was sitting there like in the corner just laughing, man. This girl was getting into it, telling it all kinds of ways she can use a dildo, and how you and your loved one can share that intimate experience. I'm like, nope, that's not for me. But it was just funny hearing what she was talking about. A, a dildo. You know how pro wrestling have seminars? Yeah, well, they got dildo seminars. <laughs> Are you shitting me, man? No, this is legit the truth, man. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. That's crazy. I'm looking at the chat here again. David Wallachek wants to know what is your guys top 12 WrestleMania matches of all time? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Damn. That's really Damn. Uh, Damn. I I'm, I'm going to have to for me I'm going to have to I don't know about you Robin, I'm going to have to uh go with 3 or 5 on that one. What do you say? Um well, I'm going to name a few. I'm not going to name a lot of them. There's so many go by. Well, one of them is uh, uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Yes, yes. That's a good one. Another good one was where uh, Rowdy Piper boxed Mr. T. Oh, yeah, WrestleMania 2. WrestleMania yep. 2 right there, yeah. yeah. And then um, another one, would, of course, everybody knows this one, was uh, two of them, the other two, would be... Uh, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior uh, for you know the championship titles. WrestleMania six. Yep, and mm-hmm. then the one between uh, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, where he picked up Andre the Giant and slammed him. WrestleMania three. Yep, um, I can I can name several, um, but those are some of my you know favorite you know matches. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many, but that's a good question. I mean, I can name more, but right now those are the those are the of all the WrestleMania matches, those the ones I just mentioned are my favorites of you know of the different WrestleManias. I would have to say Ricky Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Macho Man Randy Savage, WrestleMania three for the Intercontinental uh, mm-hmm. Championship. That match right there would have to be like my all time favorite. Number two would have to be Hulk and Andre when he body slammed him. Yep. And number three, I would have to see say um Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon in the ladder match for the Intercontinental oh, Championship. Yeah. That was yes. awesome. Yeah. Sorry, Miss. I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That match, that match right there. And then also WrestleMania 13, Austin versus Bret Hart with Ken Shamrock as special guest referee. Oh, that Dude. was great. Good. Dude, you had a double turn that night because Austin was the heel going into it. Hart was the good was the face. Yes. By the end of this, Austin became the face and Hart became the heel because the crowd got behind Austin. That's when you had the bloodstone thing when he's like ah and he's bleeding blood all down his face and shit and he passed out. He did not tap out. That was that had to be one of my favorite matches right there because how that how the finish of that match right there ended. Dude, I mean, there's that's a good question. I mean, I can name several other WrestleManias as well, but mm-hmm. but that whole thing about the what you were talking about the Ricky Steamboat, Randy Macho Man Savage. Remember when they were wrestling for the Intercontinental, where Randy Savage grabbed that ring bell and like popped uh, Ricky Steamboat in the throat yeah, with the bell, yeah, yeah. ring bell. Yeah, that scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. I was like, "No, you can't stick the ring bell on Ricky Dragon Steamboat's throat." Yeah, yeah, you you could not do that because I when I was on a few a couple weeks ago when I was on Redline Radio, we I mentioned that right there. I said what I love about that match and the build up, the build up, which you don't see really much nowadays in pro wrestling. Not today, no. No, not today, not today, because Savage took that belt. And he injured Steamboat's neck. I remember my brother, he was cussing. He was like, Macho Man, why? You know, and he's like, damn, Steamboat. Months, two, was it a month or two months later? Correct me if I'm wrong. Steamboat comes back and he starts whipping Savage's ass out of nowhere. And it was like, what? <laughs> it's like Steamboat's back. Steamboat's back. And then they challenge, he challenges him at a match at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. And they have their match, and damn, god dang, the freaking match right there was just 
just I speak it's awesome and then speaking of steamboat not uh referring to wwe um one of my other favorite matches was the feuds uh between uh ricky the dragon steamboat and the nature boy rick fleur how they would have those hour-long matches oh those were phenomenal and they told a great story as well their feud man yeah Steamboat and the Nature Boy, man, those are some great matches. Yes, the the best of three right there with Steamboat and Nature Boy. David Wallachek says, Robin, he had that Macho and Steamboat as the number one. I love it. And he said, how about the triple threat three-way tag team ladder match with the Dudleys versus Hardys versus Edge and Christian? Oh, that, that was that, that was priceless. Oh, God, yeah, that was the most entertaining match I've seen, like in WWE. I mean, there's a lot, but I I would have to say I would have to put that in the top of of all WWE matches. That was just phenomenal, man. It was. I love that match. It was. It 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 definitely was. It, that was great. That was great. Um, history making moments, like I like I mentioned, I said the ladder match with Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. Robin, how about the uh, first Money in the Bank ladder match, which was at WrestleMania too? That was pretty interesting. Um, you know, you never seen anything like that before. No, no. And um, I was at awe at that match. That was just great. It was, it was different. It was original. And I didn't even when I was watching that match, you couldn't tell where it was going to end and how it was going to end. Um, it was just really, it, it was just a fun match, and that whole—I mm-hmm. love that whole Money in the Bank idea match. It's just, it was just original. It was, it was, it was something by Chris Jericho there. Now, gotta love Jericho, man. Jericho was the shit, man. He is, he is, he's, he's evolved with the times. He's definitely evolved. With I the miss, times. I miss him when he was the Lionheart, Chris Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, WCW man. Yeah, definitely WCW. Now, one thing I have to say is that if you'd had to pick a WrestleMania as your favorite WrestleMania, which which one would that be? WrestleMania three. WrestleMania three. WrestleMania three would be my number one WrestleMania. I'll tell you what my number two would be. What's that? WrestleMania thirty. Thirty was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would put that in their top five. I, I I really enjoyed WrestleMania 30. 30 was good. 30 was good because for the fact that you had that story with Daniel Bryan. In modern wrestling with like with WWE, Daniel Bryan trying to be the top guy and he was pushed down to be a B plus player. He opened up WrestleMania with Triple H and Triple H's pop. God dang man. <laughs> He got in that ring there, and it was Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Daniel Bryan s- started WrestleMania, and he ended WrestleMania by holding the world and the WWE heavyweight titles mm-hmm. above his head. Speaking of the, that, that was good. Speaking of another great WrestleMania moment, what about the match between AJ Styles and Shane McMahon? That one was awesome. WrestleMania 33. Yeah, that was in my own backyard. I could not go to that, Robin. You know why? Because well, I'm taking your man card away from me from that. Really? Because my daughter was just born uh, two months of <laughs> two months prior to that. Is that why you're taking my man card away? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, your wife gives birth to your child, yeah, and I'm, you I'm say, "I'm going to WrestleMania," <laughs> and she's like, "If you go, I'm gonna fucking kill you." What do you do? <laughs> I'm, hey, I was just messing with you, <laughs> but that, <laughs> but that match with him and um, him and AJ Styles. I'm, yes. I've been a big AJ Styles fan when he was like wrestling in the Indies before he went to you know. Um, TNA and Impact and all that. Uh, he's came a long way. Um, so my top three favorite wrestlers of the world today would be AJ Styles, Akata, and Kenny Omega. That's my top three of the world. Ah, uh, damn. You put me in a such a compromise situation. <laughs> <laughs> because I was asked about my Mount Rushmore, and it depends on best on the mic Technical or face heel, I just Best I screw mic. this up. This is so damn hard for me, man. It's so hard. 
best on the mic is good. I would say my favorite be best on the mic would be Rowdy Rowdy Piper mm-hmm. would be number one. Um, and then I would say uh, number two. I mean, there's so many, but I'm going to go with uh, um, Nick Botwinkle. He was he was he was smooth back in the day, man. Wearing the suits and he just, he, yeah. he was great. And then um, number three for me, everybody says for rock. I mean, he was good on the mic, but I'm gonna have to say Jericho, man. Jericho got has got it going on on that mic, man. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. Jericho. Jericho. I mentioned this before. Jericho's evolved with times with wrestling yes, that's why he keeps reinventing himself that's why he's he's relevant he's relevant in the business right now because if he's not he's just been, good yeah yeah he's just he's just good if he's not relevant then he's he's not he's not good but the guy stayed relevant so he's good he is and you know and i love rowdy rowdy piper on the mic because you didn't know what he was going to say, and it wasn't scripted how it is today, what they have to say. It, it just came out of his mouth, man. You're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely you definitely did. Let me check the chat here. Let's see. Uh, David Wallachek says, five, AJ Shane was in my top 12 greatest. I like that. And he says that best on the mic, rock. I agree with The Rock there. is good. Um, I I totally agree with him. He's good, but yeah, that, I mean, I didn't name him, but he's he he was pretty he's pretty awesome on the mic too, and he's made a big name for himself. You know, going from professional wrestling, you know, to the movies. Man, that guy's making bank everywhere he goes. He has. He has. What what I think is with um with The Rock, I think it's having the right manager having the right roles in the scripts brought to him. That's that's why. That's why. Look at, example, Dave Batista. I believe uh, He's Dave... He's getting some big roles. Yeah, he was yeah. In the, um, he was in the James Bond uh, movie Spectre. Mm-hmm. Um, he said Guardians of the Galaxy. He's, he's getting up there, too. And then, of course, John Cena is getting some movie roles, too, but not as the big movie roles as, you know, Batista and The Rock, you know. Yeah, he's, but but he 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 is he is, and do you remember back when Cena was like bad mouth on the Rock, saying you said you're gonna be here and you left and stuff, and Cena actually came retracted a statement he said about the Rock running to Hollywood. He says, I understand why he did it now, and it's like there you go because he was he was being a hypocrite about it. There, Cena was being a hey, hypocrite about it, man. I remember. Uh, Cena's uh, first debut match where he went up against Kurt Angle. That was priceless. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I saw Cena before he became Cena. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. You know where he started off, too? He started off over at Ohio Valley Wrestling over in Louisville, Kentucky, because at the time they were um, part with uh, you know WWE. And um, a lot of big names came from there: Batista, CM Punk, The Miz, um, all of them. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I remember John Cena wrestling for OVW. Yeah, but he was Cena. But you saw him before he was John Cena, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me mention this here, and I'll tell you I'll tell you my little story about that. Uh, David Wallachek says um, Edge, J, AJ, and Edge are his favorites of all time. And he said that Dusty Rhodes was great on the mic, too. Oh, he so, sure was, man. Yeah, he was. Let me tell you something about hard times. Hard times. That promo right there is the greatest promo about hard times. You were talking about hard times. i tell you about hard times. i tell you about hard times right now, right here in this country. <laughs> hard times yes. is when you go down to the local bar with your buddy to have a drink and have a meal that they're closed because the coronavirus coming in hard times is when you want to go to your local wrestling event there and you want to support that and it's shut down because of the coronavirus hard times is when you go to the grocery store and you can't find some tp to wipe your ass with (laughs) and you can't find paper towels to wipe yourself with and you can't find baby wipes 
to wipe your baby with so they don't get rash. That's hard times. Hard times. And also is- hard times. You go to the grocery store, you can't find pasta and can of soup. That's hard times. And even top ramen. <laughs> yes, I agree with you there right there. Hard times is you can't find that canned food that you need to feed your family and that because some motherfucker decided to hoard it all and you would have drop kick him and give him the bionic elbow and take a can. Hard times is when that elderly couple is trying to shop and everything gets taken from them from some hoarder and you want to kick that SOB's butt and give them back what they need so they can get on through the (laughs) night. That's hard times there. And hard times is that when the news media, NBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, ABC, XYZ, ABC, NBW, whatever, alphabetical order reports, it keeps you in fear about the cases and deaths, cases and deaths, but they don't talk about recovery. That's hard times right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, Dusty Rhodes is rolling in his grave right now. <laughs> oh, Dusty Rhodes is loving it, baby. He's loving it. Let's give it a round of applause right there. <laughs> Rest in peace. Rest in peace to American Dream. Dusty Rhodes. American Dream there. Well, Here you go, buddy. And then we're, remember when you used to, used to have Sapphire. Come on, Sapphire. Sapphire. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Sapphire. That's right. <laughs> Jake Roberts was and still is great on the mic, as David Wallachek says. I do agree with him. Jake, uh, Jake Roberts did an awesome promo over at AEW. Yes. Man, I was just like. I was just like at awe, man, when he oh, was at AEW too. with that awesome promo, man. Right there, man. He went up to Cody Rhodes and took him to school. I love how Jake delivers that promo right there. Yep. And he just don't get too loud. And he looks right in the camera. And he delivers the promo without saying or getting too loud. To That's him. classic Jake Roberts. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's just basic. It's basic. It's basic Jake Roberts. Let me tell you about John Cena. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, I got to tell you about this. Okay. Back, it was around 2002. I lived in Knoxville, Tennessee. I went to a house show. Hot bed of wrestling. Hot yes. bed of wrestling in Knoxville. Yes. Smoky Mountain Wrestling by Jim Cornette. Right there on my back wall. One of them. Let's see, Jim, where are you at? There you are. Jim Cornette. I met the guy. So anyway, <laughs> I, um, Jim Cornette, uh, so we went to a house show. This is back when they first did the, um, what do you call it, the, the branch Start split. Matches. We, yeah, when you had Raw and SmackDown house shows. Yeah, I miss the hot house shows and dark matches. They yeah. still do them today, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was a Raw house show. So this was back when Brock Lesnar, he wrestled against Jeff Hardy. He squashed his ass. The main event of this card was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Ric Flair in a steel cage match. Okay. <laughs> With the Enforcer AA interfering and Ric Flair leaving bloody. But before the match happened... Okay. Well, let's see. The first match had Stevie Richards. I forgot who he wrestled. But then you had Bradshaw wrestle the big show, Booker T. That was when the NWO thing was going on, and he was in and out and everything. But um, X-Pac was there. So they had this one match where they had this one guy in these yellow tights and this buzz cut um, haircut. He's in there. He, he's working his butt off, Robin. I'm telling you, this guy's working his butt off. And the crowd's like, boo, boo. He sucks. He turns around. And he's like, shut up, shut up. Just going crazy. My younger <laughs> brother, he's sitting there like, hey, 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 this guy sucks. I smacked him. I said, dude, I said, guy's putting on a hell of a match. And the other guy's trying to put on a hell of a match. I said, for all you know, this guy could be become one of the biggest superstars in WWE and you don't even know it yet. 
two years later, that guy became John Cena, and he became one of the biggest superstars in WWE. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Hey, I'll, I'll, speaking of stories, I'll tell you a funny Jim Cornette story. I was with David Stockwell, and we went to Heroes and Legends show up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh-huh. where they where they get all the classic wrestlers up there. Yeah, and I had a I had wrestle podcasts up there. I was doing, you know, how I go do my you know live promo interviews. So me and David did one with Jim Cornette, which is good. Yeah, uh, if, yeah. If, if you find it. It's uh, it's uh, Demo Blast Studios Wrestle Podcast Jim Cornette interview on YouTube. So we were interviewing him. He looked at me, and goes, "Where'd you get your clothes from? A soup kitchen?" <laughs> <laughs> it was so I great. Love it. it was great being ribbed on by Cornette. It was great, but he gave us a good interview. But I'm I'm blessed to have been ribbed by Jim Cornette. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love the guy. I love the guy. What he does and everything. I don't take him seriously. You see, a lot of these people don't know how to take him. I met some people at an NXT show, and they're like, "Yeah, screw Kim, Jim Cornette. He don't like Kenny Omega." And I said, um, "Do you really believe and take Jim Cornette seriously?" <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's just. I said, I said, I like Cornette. Oh, what you like Cornette? I'm like, yeah, dude. I said. Guy's been around forever. Don't take him Midnight seriously. Express. He's a character. That's what he is. He pisses people off. You know? He's Come a, on. He's a great he, great heel. Great heel. Yeah, that's what he does. People take him seriously. They whine about it. They're like, oh, Cornette hurt my feelings. You oh, Jim Cornette. He's an evil son of a bitch. Jim Cornette. <laughs> I hate Jim Cornette. <laughs> I, I, I don't like him because he managed the Midnight <laughs> Express, too. He's <laughs> yeah, son of the, a bitch. That's basically what they basically think. Uh... But there's one problem. Everybody still thinks that I absolutely suck. <laughs> Are you tongue-tied there, Mr. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> what? Hi, I'm tongue-tied. I was trying to figure out what I was going to say about Jim Cornette, and uh, I'm just sitting there trying to say a question, see what Robin would say. <laughs> I would say... Uh... Fickle, fickle, fickle. Fickle, fickle, fickle. Your fickle. You don't hear my sound soundboard going off? No, what's your soundboard? I can't hear it. Oh, damn. You're going to have to watch a replay of this. I've been playing this here. I was like tongue-tied. What do you mean? I, I, I can't hear sound. it. I can't hear it. I can't hear it, but okay. Mm-hmm. I'll have to different play it. Yeah, you're going to have to watch a replay. <laughs> Go back and watch the replay of this, man. Damn, my soundboard. Why is it not working? Damn, <laughs> son of a bitch. I know everyone that's viewing right now could probably hear it. I, I damn, that sucks. <laughs> it sucks, man. It sucks, but um, shit. Damn, Robin. No, you got to do it. You got to do it like uh, Ron Simmons. Damn. All right, here we go. Let me look in the camera. <clears throat> damn. There you go. <laughs> was, that was that good? Was that good? Or Robin? I can uh talk like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right now here on the Everett Lee show, I have none other than Robin Nelson of Wrestle Popcast. What? And future great wrestlings beyond the bell. Robin. How the hell are you doing there, son? How are you doing there tonight? You have a cold one? You you enjoying Stone Cold Steve Austin's company? What? <laughs> hey, you want to know who does a great impersonation of Stone Cold Steve Austin? Who's Check that? out Stone Cold E.T. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of that. I've heard of that, man. Stone Cold E.T. Check him out. I met him. And uh, he, uh, I interviewed him, and he um, d- did a good one for my uh, podcast. And he goes, and he was looking over at Marcus Bagwell. He's like, "See Bagwell over there, and me, Bagwell, me." <laughs> what? What? Stone Cold wants to know if uh, you enjoying this podcast tonight because Stone Cold is just having a hell of a time right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got some, we got some stuff going on in the chat, Robin. We got to check this out right now. Right, George says that he loves the drops. He, it's working for them because they can hear it. Unlike you, what? But he says, <laughs> damn, 
perfect. That sounded great. Give me a hell yeah. And he said, that AJ Styles doing Austin. What? It's just great. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love doing that. But, I, you know, I can always do... Um, I can always do... Let me take the sunglasses off here. I always... Well, actually, here. Let's just do this like this. We have The Rock... Triple H, you look like Tarzan, but you wrestle like Jane. You smell what The Rock is cooking. Right now, The Rock is right here with Robin Nelson of Wrestle Popcast. I'll tell you what, if any jabroni out there that don't know who Robin Nelson is, you better go to, to the SmackDown Hotel. You better check in to room 316. You better take that key and shine it right up and stick it straight up your monkey ass. Because The Rock says you better smell what he's cooking. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of Stone Cold Steve Austin, have you tried his beer? What? What? You, what? Have you tried his beer? What? What? Skull Ranch beer? What? <laughs> IPA? What? How'd you get a hold of that, man? Tell me how you got a hold of uh, that. I, I about I fell on my chair right here when I saw that you had that. <laughs> How'd hey, you get a hold of it? I know people in certain areas of the world, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, you if do. you look online, you can be able to get it. I mean, um, they have them here in Ohio too. Certain areas in Ohio, you just got to look. Yeah, I, I I tried to I tried to look at one point. I did try to look at um, where I could order that uh, IPA beer at, but um, dude, the, you have to you have to know where to look at to find that because it's just it's popular. It's popular. His beer is really popular right now. <laughs> yes, it is, and it's great, man. How's it taste? For us to- Oh, it's good. It's I'm a beer guy. It's it tastes good. Um, I'm gonna see Stone Cold ET get some and do a promo and talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do pretty good, don't I? I'll tell you a good impersonation. You didn't. You can do pretty good. Do one of David C. Russell. I don't even know where to start, man. <laughs> I think he. I think he fell off the chat, man, because he was on fire there at the beginning, man. He comes in strong, and he. I think he freaking fell off here. Um, AJ Styles doing Austin, like I said. George Dave Wallachick says Jay Lethal doing the uh, Macho Man and. Oh Flair. yes, the Macho Man. That's yeah. good. That's a good guy. Woo! That's that's right. <laughs> that's right. He he does it. He does it great. I can't believe you're not hearing my uh, my sound. I mean, everyone is. You're gonna have to watch back on this, and you're gonna have to laugh. I it. will. I usually when you play your board, I usually hear everything, but for some reason, I couldn't hear that. Okay. I'll tell you. Um, I I'll tell you what it is. I have to update it because it's kind of outdated. I did the latest Windows 10 update on my PC right here, and I had to go back and refix things. And when okay, I, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll just watch the replay. Yeah. You definitely gonna have to watch a replay of it. Um, okay, there you are. I thought I lost you there for a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, I lost a little connection. But hey, thank you so much for having me on. I yeah. got to go. Yeah, me too, man. Because I've already drank two of these, and um, I'm about to go run. So before I do close out, I'll do. Uh, I'll let you do your plugs. I'll do my. Cl- plugs and we'll close this podcast out though but um as always thank you for coming on tonight and I it's had a always a time. pleasure i always i always have a great time talking with you and we need to do this again yes yes we do yes we do you're gonna be um are you gonna be on the chris carnage show here soon i'm waiting for him to invite me on if you're listening chris he said he was man i'll have to get on his ass though but um yeah you tell chris carnage you get his thumb up his, up his ass and invite me on a show. Okay. <laughs> because I put the F-U in fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But before we do, before I do close out with the show, 
again, I want to thank you for coming on. As always, it's long overdue having you coming back on here on the Everett Lee Show. And um, do you want let er- everyone know what you have coming up on the horizon with Russell Popcast, Future Great Wrestling, and where they can find you on social media at? Yes. Well, uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern on Wrestle Popcast, I'm going to have Major League Wrestling star Logan Creed on my show. It's going to be fun. And um, I got some other guests coming up I'm working on to come on my show, so stay tuned. Um, you can follow Wrestle Popcast on Facebook. You can follow Wrestle Popcast on Twitter at Rob Kicks. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Wrestle Popcast. And for Wrestle Popcast, you can subscribe to my shows at Spreaker.com, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, Podcast Addict, uh, CastBox, Podcast City Network at PodcastCity.net. And if you want to see my show feature great wrestling beyond the bell, um, subscribe to the Future Great Wrestling YouTube channel every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Um, we've got uh, new episodes that are previously, previously recorded because of the coronavirus. Um, you can see some of my Beyond the Bell um, latest episodes on there and some great exclusive content. Content, And also follow Future Great Wrestling on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, and you can um, also follow me on Instagram at Russell Popcast as well. And um, that's about it of, of, of all my plugging. <laughs> nice, nice. I said that wrong. I don't plug, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't plug, huh? <laughs> that's right. I had a ball. Thank yes. you so much, man. This oh, was fun. As always. <laughs> Podcasting Network, your top source for independent podcasting. Head over to podcasting.net. Follow them on social media, Podcasting Network on Facebook, Twitter at PodcastCityNet. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Podcasting Network, and on Twitch, backslash Podcast City Network. Podcast City Network, be creative, be independent, be yourself. When I need a logo, a graphic design done, I use 3Count Design. 3Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video photography, and other forms of media. Everything from t-shirt designs to websites. For more information, head over to facebook.com slash 3Count Design. That is facebook.com slash 3Count Design. When I want to kick back a few cold ones with my friends, I head over to City Limits Taproom. City Limits Taproom has a wide selection of TVs to watch your favorite sports indoor and outdoor seating they are pet friendly city limits tap room also has food made fresh to order and the grilled cheese is excellent i recommend the grilled cheese and the apple pie cider the fries on the side can't go wrong with that baby more information for upcoming events head over to facebook.com slash city limits tap room thank you for tuning in on this episode of the Everett lee show 